I am, could not have been more wrong about Brian Kelly and Notre Dame. Notre Dame has snuck up on us. If they survive, they've earned a right to play for the championship. So now the believers go beyond South Bend. The offseason chatter of change has turned into facts on the field. Just one inch, one point from perfection. Since then, five games, five dominating wins, all driven by a ground game as good as any in America. So now the bandwagon builds. The Loyals welcome the come late Big names have fallen. That's the microphone! Yeah! But big tests await, like today. While North Carolina State may not have history on its side, they are presently controlling their own championship destiny. A November to remember is on the South Bend horizon. But that depends on how October ends. To borrow the legendary Grantland Rice's famous lead 93 years ago, outlined against a blue-gray October sky. Get the one day you can use it, right? Here we are, number nine and number 14. Both six and one, both run it well. Both feel like they belong with the best in the country. One will be left standing when the first college football playoff standings come out on Tuesday. NC State coming out of that confining tunnel just to the right of where Notre Dame will enter from their familiar tunnel. Winners of five in a row. Brian Kelly's team building momentum. And here come the Irish. Birthday week for Brian Kelly, turned 56. His team's won five in a row by 20 or more. Hasn't happened around here since 1966. One of the big reasons it's happening, the junior running back, Josh Adams, who is seventh in the nation. 967 rushing yards, leading this team that was built to do it on the ground. And that's a test that will come up today against North Carolina State. First ever visit to South Bend for the 14th rank. Wolfpack from Raleigh. We're in the state flag, and about 5,000 have made the trip from North Carolina. Their head coach in his fifth year, Dave Doran, he's 45 years old, really has an experienced team. He's built from the start. This is one of those payoff seasons. His quarterback, Ryan Finley, hasn't thrown a pick this year, hasn't thrown a pick in his last 313 passes. And Notre Dame's turned this season around by taking the ball away. Can Brian Kelly's team do that today? For more with the coach, here's Catherine Tapper. Coach, after the win against USC, a lot of talk about Notre Dame making a run for the college football playoffs. What did you tell your team about that, and what did you see from them in practice this week? Well, we've been in elimination since the Georgia game, so each game's been a playoff for us. We've had to win every game we played, and that'll continue to be the case, so that's nothing different. You know, our guys know how to prepare. It's, it's getting to that peak performance on Saturday, and they've done a great job. So we've got another great opponent, another ranked team. We're going to have to play well again today. You guys have one of the best rushing attacks in the country, led by Josh Adams. NC State has one of the best run defenses in the country. What's the key to success on the ground today? Well, we still have to run the football, and, and so you know we've got to leverage down a distance and, and uh, obviously balance it with some run, play action, take some shots down the field. But, look, we know what we're going to to do they know what we're going to do there's no secrets here it's just good old-fashioned football all right coach thank you very much mike all right Catherine. that's what dave Doran, the coach told Catherine in the pregame with the 1984 heisman winner doug flutie i love this matchup number six with the run number six against the run you heard what brian said you've heard what doran said what do you think is going to play out brian said we're still going to have to run the ball so in order to run the football against a great defensive front, I think you have to take it at Bradley Chubb, who is the athlete who's the dominant defensive end that's a penetrator, disturber. You run at him, pound him, go right at him, take some of the athleticism away, and hopefully it pays off down the line third, fourth quarter. I still think Notre Dame's got to make some big plays in the pass game in order to win this game. Wolfpack, not a one-trick team. They're not just defense. Their offense is good. I mentioned the quarterback doesn't make mistakes. And as Chris Simpson was talking about pregame, they have dynamic playmakers as well. They really do. The tailback, number seven, Hines. 
He's an elite speed guy. He's a track guy, not just, I mean, if he gets a crease, he's a football player first, though. Mm -hmm. There's track guys that come out, and they can just run and look pretty. Right. No, he, he's a football player. He'll make you miss. You got to tighten him up, watch the kick returns with him. And Samuels in the slot, he does a little of everything. Put the ball in his hands. He can take it 80 in a hurry. Well, you know, it's a big time of the year. Why? Because we're talking wind chill. It feels like 33. It's cold. It's the way it's supposed to feel outside when playoff berths are being talked about. And it's one of those days. Off we go in South Bend. Let's play some football. NC State won the toss. They defer. Notre Dame will get it. C.J. Sanders, three career kickoff returns, hasn't broken one in a while. Kyle Bambard is the kickoff man for North Carolina State, winners of six in a row. Who's still talking playoff when the sun sets? Off we go with the Wolfpack and the Irish in South Bend. Good kickoff with the helping wind, and from the five, it'll be Tony Jones Jr., who is back there with Sanders, cuts up the middle, and he'll be brought down across the 20 at the 21-yard line. And we have an injured NC State player here to start, unfortunately, for the Wolfpack. And the Notre Dame training staff out uh, quickly to help look at Damian Darden, or check that, it's not Darden, it's the other number 47, came in CSAC. So they will look at him as this game gets going. The Notre Dame offense that has continued to put up big yardage no matter the opponent. And as we mentioned, there were tests of good rushing teams they were going to have to face during the first part of the season with Georgia. And that was the toughest game. The only loss to the Irish, 20 to 19. Then the second game that they played against a good run team, Michigan State, they ran the ball effectively. For them. So as Doran comes out, the head coach to look at the injured Wolfpack players helped off by the athletic training staff. Let's take a peek at today's starting lineups brought to you by CarMax. Josh Adams, as mentioned, averaging over nine yards of carry, second in the country with Claypool and Fake and Equinemius St. Brown trying to get downfield. The guys up front, we always talk about the left side because they're all Americans, and Mike McGlinchey and Quentin Nelson, deservedly so. Sam Mustafer has a big game. He's going to get challenged by B.J. Hill. Watch the center. Take your eyes off the ball a few plays and watch what happens over the center both ways today for North Carolina State offense and Notre Dame's offense. The junior from Teaneck, New Jersey gets it going. Irish drive starts at their own 21-yard line. First play, first run, Adams. First opening, Josh Adams. Take your stats and take that. Gain of 21, first down, Notre Dame. And what they do so well with the script to start the game, the players are so dialed into this script, they jump the ball and go right away. So after a big chunk of 21, here's the second play. At that time, there's not much room for Adams, a gain of three. Well, Brandon Wimbush, the quarterback, we talked about his growth, Doug, and the coaches said to us this week, let's forget the stats. The stats aren't going to improve too much in the completion percentage. The guy makes winning plays. He's a playmaker. He gets the ball in the end zone, in the red zone. He's been converting on third downs. And look at those rushing touchdowns, 10 of them this year. Second and seven, and he's brought down. He is sacked rare this season. Contavious Street comes up with his second sack of the year. And this is the 11th time. That NC State or that Notre Dame's quarterback has been sacked. Street on Kramer on the outside. You just give him a little bump and whip around the outside. It's a young offensive right tackle. We had a chance to sit down and talk to you this week. He's got his work cut out for him with this defensive line. Tommy Kramer, the sophomore, he and Robert Haynes have shared the tackle position. Third and long, and Bradley Chubb is hurt from as he brings down Wimbush. So despite that one early run, the two times the Irish drop back to pass, NC State's two defensive ends erase the play. Alizé Mack on left tackle, actually as a tight end, he was going to get some help. Here comes Chubb, he's working on a tight end, little pushback. Josh Adams was in a position to try to help. He pushed Mack past the quarterback underneath to make the sack. There's Naheem Hines, who you talked about, Doug, a terrific kick returner, kicking into the wind. 
Tyler Newsom. Notre Dame was a player shy. So they quickly will run out the backup safety. Jordan Jemark Heath. And the punt comes off before the play clock expires and not a good kick from Newsom. Fielded on the bounce at the 17. It is Hines who's taken one back already this year. And he returns it 10 yards to the 27 yard line. Dexter Williams back in the Notre Dame lineup this week. The backup running back. Playing the gunner. Made the tackle. Okay, so here comes North Carolina's offense. And we'll check there at Carmax starting lineups. Several explosive players to track all American Hines. He lines up a running back. Samuels lines up everywhere. Up front, 106 total starts. And we mentioned to watch the centers. Garrett Bradbury, very athletic, but is he strong enough to hold up in the middle? We'll watch 65 over the ball in white today. Ryan Finley, the quarterback. And the drive starts at their own 28. They'll turn and hand to Hines. He gains about two yards, just over the 30. Drew Tranquil, who's the number three tackler on this Notre Dame defense, makes the stop. So Ryan Finley's career started at Boise State. He got his degree in three years, transferred to North Carolina State. This is his second year. He actually has another year. We'll talk about that a bit later on. But he takes care of the ball incredibly well. No picks this year. No picks since last November against Miami. 313 straight passes. And that one's broken up. It was late. It was intended for Stephon Lewis, the receiver, but Julian Love broke it up to set up third down for the Wolfpack. Julian Love just sat flat-footed and broke on this. Notre Dame wants to take away the rhythm passes, force Finley to hold the ball, have to go up the field with it. He's very good at those quick, that quick passing game. Great break on the ball by Julian Love. Irish defense has been very good on third down this season. Needing to get to the 38, Finley hit as he throws. It's high and incomplete. The coverage was good. Jacoby Myers, the intended receiver. And that is three and out, thanks to Sean Crawford and the Notre Dame defense. Well, Niles Morgan comes and gets the pressure up through the middle on a little loop, little stunt right up through. And down the field, if they can get Finley uneasy in the pocket, make him hold the football a little bit, the percentages come down. He's a 70%, 69% completion guy. And you can't give him the short passing game. Junior A.J. Cole will move to the right. Kick it away. Caught by Fink, and he is taken out right away. Terrific coverage on the play for North Carolina State. So the Irish will take over back at their own 21. After the good play by the Wolfpack special teams. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Microsoft Office 365 by U.S. Bank and by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, America's Power Professionals. Pumpkin time, Halloween, three days away. A touchdown, Jesus in the crowd and Steve Jobs and Mass. <laughs> well done, guys. <laughs> Notre Dame students are going to go the extra mile in creativity for your Halloween trick-or-treating or some old standards <laughs> as well. Second drive for the Irish starts same place the first one did at their own 21-yard line. And it's a gift to Adams. Great penetration and North Carolina State gives them no place to go. Derek Fernandez made that initial hit in the backfield and everybody cleaned up including Jonathan Alston off the corner. It's a seven yard loss. Watch the penetration up the field. It just blows the play up. The pullers, Bards, Alex Bards trying to come around. Can't even get around to the outside. He gets bumped off from the penetration. A terrific front four. Cleans it up for the linebackers. They'll try Adams into the boundary again. Chubb will make the tackle. Limit the gain. It'll be third and long for the Irish. Notre Dame creased the first run since then this front has taken over this defensive front is they're tough I mean they've got NFL caliber guys there's a look at Chubb now he gets to pin his ears back and go you've got to be careful in third and long not to wind up with a turnover a strip sack move the pocket a little bit do something safe it's not just Chubb there are a half dozen guys who play you saw Contavious Street already with a sack the Irish are four of 24 this year on third and ten or more and now it's going to be third to 17. Number 72, offense, five-yard penalty. 
Third down. So Tommy Kramer, the one right tackle, had a mistake on the first drive. Here it's the other right tackle, the freshman Robert Hainsey. Gary Patterson, the referee, called for the penalty. From the 13, look out from behind. Wimbush hit as he throws, completes it, but it's a loss of three as Adams is tackled by Jonathan Alston. So once again, NC State's pressure, led by Chubb, forces Notre Dame to punt. Here comes Chubb on McGlinchey, and it's just pure speed. Now, it is a screen, but you got to bump the guy, slow him down, and just speed speed gave McClinchy a problem against Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yes. And again, yes. here's speed on the outside edge. I mean, you're trying to set up a screen pass. Newsom with a second kick and is blocked. And it's in the end zone. NC State on it for the touchdown, I believe. They are a touchdown. Wolfpack, just like they did in the game in Raleigh last year on North Carolina State. Block punch turns into a touchdown. Give the touchdown to Jermaine Pratt. He recovers. The pressure comes straight up the middle, and it's a jailbreak. Outnumbered as they walk right in, and James Smith-Williams lays out. He blocked it with his ribcage. And Pratt stays on it. So Newsom has a punt block for the third time in his career. And the Wolfpack jump out on top via special teams. Carson Wise came over from Carson Newman. Division II school on for the extra point. Movement there. False start. Number 54. Kicking team. Five-yard penalty. So retry it. Will Richardson called on that flag. Pratt was one of three Wolfpack players who had the opportunity for the recovery. But as you could see, outnumbered right up the middle. And Newsom, who was struggling as he was practicing and warming up before the game with his punting, that one, he had no chance. They were all over him. The extra point now comes from 25 yards. High snap brought down. Good job of the hold by A.J. Cole, the third, the punter. So Dave Doran's team, they've got the defense. Defense backed up Notre Dame. Special teams weighs in. The punt block by James Smith-Williams. The recovery for Durant to remain cracked. Dave Doran's team's on top 7-0. Download the NBC Sports app to watch thousands of live sporting events. Stream for free with your NBCSN subscription. For details, visit NBCSports.com slash live. So the Irish trail 7-0. It's their largest deficit of the season, which in many ways is good to say if you're a Notre Dame fan late in October. But first time they've had to come from behind since the Boston College game, Saturday 3 of the season. Now Bambard kicks it. And here comes C.J. Sanders taking the short one from the 8. Sanders tries to return the special team's noise for Notre Dame. He gives the Irish good field position out at the 40-yard line. Best return he's had in a while. Let's go back to the block punch, though. Well, it's a simple numbers game. Five on three. Five guys here for NC State. Three for Notre Dame. And it's a short corner. It's a short corner, so you can't let the outside guy go free either. So the guy up the middle is blocking the punt. Usually you come down, leave the outside guy free. Couldn't do it there. And North Carolina State with a week off last week, chance to go check everything, look for the little tendencies. They get the Irish there, so Notre Dame takes over at the 40. They go with two in the backfield with Jones and Adams, and there goes Josh. Big run, Adams. 30 yards, 35 yards. Down to the 25-yard line, first down. Look at your center left guard. You got Mustafer and Nelson. They get up to the linebacker level. Good double team. The linebacker tried to shoot the gap. Mustafer came off, made the block. North and south goes Josh Adams. And there's Wimbush up top. Caught. Touchdown. Durham Smythe. Bang, bang. The Irish right back.
Well, the backside corner gets occupied, and Smythe gets across the safety's face, and it's a no-brainer. Moorhead, the safety, allowed the tight end to get across his face. The backside corner had already been cleared out. Nothing left. Nice touch on the ball by Winbush. Justin Yoon on for the extra point. And North Carolina State either made contact or caused a move. Number 84. Okay. Offense. They brought Five in the penalty. zone by Cole Komet, the Notre Dame tight end. So it'll be a little bit longer. Extra point. Play action pass, linebacker level, kind of sat a little bit, so there was plenty of room behind them. And then Smythe gets behind that linebacker level and across the safety's face. Gary Patterson's officiating crew conversation about this flag for a moment. Tony Tarantini, the side judge, came in as there was a conversation with the third official, the umpire Mark Wilson. Correction. Offside. Defense. Defense in the neutral zone, causing the, the kicking team to react. Half the distance to the goal. So when you get in that neutral zone, if that is when the offensive lineman flinches, then you caused it. So it's uh, if you're in the area where they can throw the flag on the defense, and it was, so it moves it a yard and a half closer for you. Justin adds his 39th extra point of the season. 29 second response from the Irish offense and Brandon Wimbush. Look at the, the eyes of Brandon Woodbush looking downfield. You got to make sure that backside's cleared out. He checks out to the right, sees the corner's gone. Now he finds the tight end right down the middle. You have to make sure there's nothing left on the backside. You don't lead your man into trouble. For Winbush, it is his ninth touchdown pass of the year. And for Smythe, the graduate student from Belton, Texas, had not found the end zone after five touchdowns last year. And Doug, a team that has not trailed all year, you don't know how they're going to blink and how they're going to react. And that's a great response for Notre Dame. Absolutely. First sign of adversity, you get down, how do you respond? It's very important right away. Came down the field. Obviously, the run game broke it open and then and finishing off getting in the end zone. But that's a good response by Notre Dame. The, the good thing for NC State is they came out, created momentum right away. They know. This, this scenario, this situation that they're in, it's not intimidating them. They're coming out and playing football. Naeem Hines, home run hitter. He's got a couple of touchdowns in his career. He averages 25 yards on kickoff returns during his career. He's flat out scared. Justin Hughes kicking into the wind. It's short's going to run up and go get it. Hines can't field it. Picked it up at the 17 and the sky kick. Well covered by the Irish. Tony Jones Jr. Among those down there. Along with C.J. Holmes. This ball just hangs up in the wind and does not carry at all. Ball lands at the 18. He made a long run for that and just couldn't get there in the air. Very fortunate that it just kind of sat underneath him. He was able to get on it. So we've played five and a half minutes. A lot of stuff has happened. North Carolina State's only run three plays. This is just their second drive, and it begins at their own 19 yard line. It'll be a give to Himes to the right. We get three. Mark him up at the 22 yard line against this Notre Dame defense. They'll be familiar with NC State. We'll tell you why as the game goes on. Jerry Tillery, strong play all across this front, but he has his best stretch going of the season. Tillery. Tavon Coney remains the starter at linebacker, but Captain Greer Martini is going to be back two weeks after surgery. In the secondary, the steady improvement continues. Nick Watkins had a pick last week. Their tackling might be tested the most here today. Second and seven. Finley gets it out quick. Gets it out in rhythm. He's got a lot of guys to get it to, including Kelvin Harmon. Goes up and gets some uh, tall passes. at six foot three. Doug, they use the height of their outside guys as a big part of their passing game. They're not necessarily speed guys. They're guys that can go up and get the ball while contact is, is happening. They recruit that way. They go after these lanky receivers because they don't figure they'll get those track guys out there that are blown by people. That short passing game is what Finley does the best. Nice rhythm pass, completion, get it going. Look for Notre Dame to try to sit on some of that stuff. They've already broken one of those up. Well, they were all messed up there. Uh, they had people in and out. It looked like the seven train in Times Square in New York at 5 o'clock. People coming in, coming out. You got room for me? No. Dave Doran says, pull the plug on this deal. Ain't going to work. Timeout NC State. 
middle of the first quarter. Good one in South Bend underway. While we were away, this is so troubling for North Carolina State fans. We watched their terrific back, Naheem Hines, who does it all. Their home run hitter, over 100 yards in the last three games. Walk with the athletic training staff back toward the locker room. Catherine will be on that and find if we have any updates. Very often, you'll see Jalen Samuels line up in the backfield. And with Hines out, Samuels goes back there now for third and two. With two times, they try to keep it on third and two. And they saw a bubble, and it worked. A keeper for Finley gets the first down. Finley slick. He sees opportunities for quarterback sneaks and short yarded situation. He will audible to it, quick snap the ball, and find the open gap. When there's an open gap there, Tom Brady's a master at it. He sees it all the time. Look at some of the scores. That's the other big game going on in this window. Penn State up big. Georgia crushing Florida early. Number four TCU behind early. Keep an eye on these games throughout a very busy afternoon. It's the best part of this Saturday. Finley first down throw complete on time and on target. It's Jacoby Myers for a gain of about eight and a half. Doug, you mentioned the experience of this young man from the Phoenix, Arizona area. I said he started at Boise State. So he played in uh, 14 after redshirting in 2013. Then in 2015, he became the starter for Boise State, but he got injured after three games, broke his ankle. So he received a sixth year of medical redshirt. But he has academic house in order, so he graduated undergrad at Boise State. So he's a graduate transfer, and usually we think that guy has one year. He has three years of eligibility at NC State. Started last year, playing this. This one's coming back. I think the left guard was a half second quick, number 70. Prior to the snap, false start, false start. number 53. Number 53, Offense. the left tackle. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Tyler Jones, let's go down to Catherine. Well, Mike, an update on Naheem Hines, a prolific running back for NC State. He went for an x-ray. He is out for the moment with a lower body injury. His return is questionable. All right, Catherine, that was the first down run after the short kickoff that they had to jump on there. And Hines, as you saw, got his leg rolled up on awkwardly from behind. So as they check in, you'll see multiple players back there, including Reggie Gillespie, the junior from High Point, North Carolina. Back up last year, back up again this year. Here's the throw by Finley with a flag down. It's complete for what would be a first down to Kelvin Harmon. He's tackled by Nick Watkins of the Irish, but let's check the flag. Offside, number seven, defense, penalties decline. Result of the play, first down. Really, you see the guy in coverage called for offside. No, I believe it was yeah. Kareem that came flying across about three yards in the backfield. <laughs> and I was surprised they didn't blow the play dead. He was that far offside. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that make much sense, but... Nevertheless, first and ten, NC State at the 42. Five in the pattern for Finley. Throws a nice ball. Sideline incomplete. He tried to get it right back to Kelvin Harmon one more time, and Julian Love step for step with coverage because the nc state receivers are not blazers notre dame will sit on routes they're not afraid of getting beat deep will turn and run and catch up however when it comes time to go after the ball these nc state receivers are tall and lanky can go up and get it, especially Harmon. that ball just overthrown you do not want to overthrow tall receivers give them a chance Second and ten, Gillespie runs right. Good patient running, Gillespie to the Irish side of the field to the 45-yard line and a first down. Tranquil and Love in the back end make the tackle. Injured Notre Dame player. Timeout, injured Notre Dame player. Watch how patient he is with this run. Just kind of stutters his feet, allows the hole to happen, and hits it. Gillespie's a little more of a north-south runner, power-type guy. Where Hines was a guy that would stretch the play real wide and wait for a crease to happen and then blaze through it. Notre Dame senior starting defensive tackle Jonathan Bonner is the player the athletic training staff is checking out. They're checking out his right leg as we do that. They do that. We'll do this. Back here in South Bend, Notre Dame in the top 10 coming in at number nine. Look at what's going on with the teams in the top 10. TCU, that early deficit we talked about. Wisconsin, not impressively in Champaign winning. By 14, Miami did not look good against that beaten up North Carolina team, but hangs on to win by five. We'll be continuing to keep an eye on that as the day goes on. Jonathan Bonner walked over to the sideline. A little assistance. Myron Tagovailoa Mosa, the freshman from Hawaii, 95 in for the Irish. 
And here's another run for Gillespie to the right. And the aforementioned Tango by Loa Amosa leading the charge on the stop. It'll be second down. Just not as dynamic a run game now that Hines is off the field. So it could turn into the short passing game. You may see Samuel the slot back bounce around a little bit from position to position. Maybe go back to tailback some. Keep an eye on where number one lines up. Yeah, that's the luxury they have, Doug, that other teams don't have. You lose your top running back, a guy with great breakaway speed. What do you do back there? Samuels can fill the bill. It just makes them a little less multidimensional offensively. Second and nine. Samuels flattens out. That pass is incomplete. It was Nick Watkins looking to make that first interception on Finley as he jumped the route intended for Stephon Lewis. Boy, Watkins did a nice job of breaking. Again, it's a short game route, slant. And Watkins breaks hard and gets a hand in there and just rips it out. Usually, three-step drop stuff, you're hoping your defensive line gets a hand up and tips a ball because it's very difficult to cover that one-on-one. -on -one. Nice job by Watkins. Watkins comes to the sideline. Irish go with five defensive backs here, third and nine. Set up to run. Option Gillespie got a man on the ground with a good block, but he's brought down to the 38. Troy Pride Jr., who's playing a lot more in that secondary, comes in to make the stop, and let's see what Doran will do on fourth and three. Hunting team coming on. Finley's a little more athletic than people give him credit for. He's able to run the option game, run a little zone read game. He's not a big runner, doesn't really want to take off, but he can run that other stuff. Chris Fink goes back on a day when catching punts will be difficult. A.J. Cole kicking with the win. And he drops it nose down to make it tougher to catch. And it's caught by his own teammate, which is perfect. NC State downs it at the five. It'll be a long field for the Notre Dame offense, which has been led by this man, Josh Adams, during this spectacular start to the season. Hey, it's World Series time. Let's put him in baseball terms. Nine yards to carry, second in the country. Pretty good on those long 29 to 39 yarders. Pretty good on these, but how about clearing the fences? Six runs over 60 yards, three of them for touchdowns, most in the FBS. I guess the Ruthian figure of Notre Dame runners, George Gipp, 8.1 yards per carry back in 1920. That's the school record. Adams currently at 9.2. And here he goes for another big chunk. But that's an average run from Doug. That was a run of nine. It's a, it wasn't pretty. It was semi-clean up through the middle, and he got through to the next level, gets into the secondary. Josh Adams, when he breaks the line of scrimmage upright, it's on, and that's where those 60-yard runs come. And he's now over 1,000 yards on the season. Went over 800 his freshman year, over 900 his sophomore year. Now over 1K. Wimbush with a throw, put it up for grabs. It's incomplete, trying to come back. The flag is thrown on Sean Boone, or uh, Tim Kid Glass, the other safety, who wouldn't let Alizé Mack come back to the ball. Pass interference, number 34, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Max trying to run a wheel route up the sideline, which is kind of an out and up and down the sideline. And the reason the flag comes out is because he kind of puts the brakes on and fights to come back to the ball. Receivers can get lazy and just try and let that thing fall five yards short. If you fight back through that defender towards the ball, you're going to get that call. He helps draw the flag, so it's at the 30-yard line here. 4-10 left in this opening quarter. NC State scored on a block punt. Notre Dame responded with a two-play drive for touchdown. A great penetration there by Justin Jones. It means a loss of at least a yard, maybe two yards. For Adams. This defensive line is tough, and, and that's why the last pass play wound up being a bootleg action. Notre Dame's going to have to change up where they launch the ball from, not just stand in the pocket. The run game is hit or missed right now, even though Notre Dame's gashed two decent runs. You think moving the quarterback Wimbush will slow down the pass rush? Not necessarily slow it down, but don't let them know where you are. You mm -hmm. know, make them chase. Got it. Uh, get their head on a swivel. Notre Dame takes a timeout. 30 seconds. Timeout. So each team has used one on offense here in this opening quarter. You know, when Dave Doran got this job five years ago, he comes from that defensive side of the ball. It was a big part of the Wisconsin program in the 2000s. And they built some team with five-year players, a program. And what it's shown with all the studs up front on the D-line, stopping the run. 
Here's the season average of the teams they've played. Here's what they've done against the Wolfpack. Pretty impressive. Why are they so good? Their top five guys in the defensive line are all fifth-year seniors. They got the two big run stoppers in the middle. They've got athletic guys on the edge that can rush the passer. And the, it, when your inside guys can push the pocket, mm -hmm. the outside guys are free to do what they want on the edge. And that's the star, Nick Chubb. Some people feel he's a mid to upper quarter of the first round pick in the NFL draft. The evaluation process will determine that. 6'4", 275. He could have left. Could have gone pro. Heard from the NFL that his stock could improve if he stayed another year. He got stronger, got better. And there he is, bottom of your screen, rushing Winbush. He puts it up top, and it is incomplete. Good coverage by Mike Stevens, who was injured. He's now come back to play some good, important corner and was in front of Chase Claypool, the intended ND receiver. He was in perfect position to play that football. Claypool did a nice job of trying to climb the ladder and go over him. Perfect position and play. That's why they're playing defensive back, coach. He had that. Yeah. He had two hands perfectly lined up. You could have intercepted that ball, but he's over on the defensive side. Third and 11, a run play with Adams and North Carolina State all over that. Just a gain of a yard. Jared Fernandez, who is the linebacker, who leads this team in tackles, thanks in part to all the good play in front of him. All over that one, and the Irish have to pick it up. A couple of first downs will kick it away. The run game's becoming feast and famine. I mean, you know, stuff, stuff, stuff. Maybe you gash one out of every five or six and get get a handful of yards. But it's not going to be those consistent eight-yard plays that we saw last week. Hines returned the first punt 11 yards. Newsom had the second one blocked. So, obviously, with the Hines injury, we have a change in the kick returner. But first, we have a flag. Snap infraction. Number 54. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Watch what happens with John Shannon, the snapper. Hold up, second thought. So it'll cost him five. Gavin Locklear has gone back to return this punt for North Carolina State. It has been all Hines this year. Locklear says, get out of the way. Not a good kick. Newsom struggling, so one gets blocked. This one goes only to the 40-yard line. One more penalty flag down back at the line of scrimmage. During the kick, holding number 13 on the receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. So instead of the drive starting at the 40, Timeout. it will start at the 30 for North Carolina State. All tied at seven, two and a half left in the first. Follow your sports. It's not a dream. It's TV come true. It's a lot easier to make decisions when you know what comes next. If you move your old 401k to a Fidelity IRA, we make sure you're in the loop at every step. From the moment you decide to move your money to the instant your new retirement account is funded. And at Fidelity, you'll see how all your investments are working together. Because when you know where you stand, Things are just clearer. In NC State, we're on a march to achieve our full potential. We have extraordinary skills. We have great thinkers. From the hands-on introductory level all the way through the PhD. We're not just scientists that sit in a lab fiddling around with test tubes. We're problem solvers. We make something impossible possible. To solve real problems in the world that actually save lives. We are doing things that nobody else is doing. We're here to think and do the extraordinary. Leave the cue to game break. Special teams big in the other marquee matchup right now. Number two, Penn State. Number six, Ohio State. Opening kickoff, who else? Saquon Barkley, 97 yards untouched. If you're scoring at home, he now has eight rushing TDs, three receiving, one passing, and two via kickoff return. It's 14-3 Penn State, Mike. Just crazy, Liam. 15th straight game that Barkley's had a touchdown that extends his longest active 
FBS streak. We're keeping an eye on that. The other big matchup inside the top 15 on this final Saturday of October. North Carolina State will take over at its own 29 yard line. I'll leave it at seven. Doug, this is a North Carolina State offense that it's been interesting. They've had stretches where they've put big points on the boards, and then they've had stretches during the year where they've just ground to a halt. That rhythm passing you talked about with Finley is what gets them going. Here he goes to the 29. They put Samuels in the backfield, and the guy who lines up everywhere gets one. When we talk about rhythm passing, he likes that short game, and the Notre Dame DBs have been jumping those routes a little bit. I'd expect a double move the next time they give you that look. Double move meaning a hitch and go out and up, something up the field. Gillespie's the back. Samuels lines up in the slot. That's where he is most effective. And we had movement by, I believe, one of the receivers, Jacoby Myers. False start. Number 11. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. So even though this is just the third meeting between these teams, and they did meet last year, this is a very interesting game for Mike Elko, who the last three seasons was the Wake Forest defensive coordinator. So he's become very familiar with North Carolina State and vice versa. So there's a little bit of we know a little bit about you. So maybe you can try to do some different things than you did in the past. Yeah, NC State studied Wake Forest film to get ready for this game. NC State had success against Wake. The better talent quality on this Notre Dame defense with Elko to really turned this team around this year. Four man rush, Finley time, and again it's broken up, and again it's Julian Love. So the quarters, Watkins and Love having a very active, and as you said, route jumping first quarter. Yeah, they're not giving ground. They're settling at about the route depth. Here we go, right here, one on one. Just settle those feet and break hard. A little wrap around with the right arm, but he didn't turn the body so they don't call it. Nice play on the ball with the left hand, Julian Love. They're not afraid of NC State's speed. Need to get to the 39. Ryan Finley. Pocket collapses around him. Terrific pass and a catch by Samuels in traffic. The only place he could make the reception he did at the 42-yard line. Great anticipation as the pocket's starting to close in on Finley. He's going to bring it up and around Crawford, and the ball's just thrown to the inside. He wasn't open mm -hmm. when the ball was thrown. Let's see if they'll take a look at that. There's a little bobble in there. He's got it. Does it hit the ground or hit his arm and pop up and he holds on? You would think they would stop it to look at it after seeing those two looks. But once again, they fooled us. Finley shot down the field. Man open. Caught by Lewis. Stefan Lewis to the 15-yard line. First down. At time, they go deep, and they beat Julian Love for a gain of 42. Well, Lewis does a double move. It's been time. Maybe one play late, but they still get a little stop and go action. See ya. That's what you said they were going to do. Oh, they got it. You have to. When, when defensive backs are sitting flat-footed and breaking on your rhythm throws, you got to make them respect the deep ball. That's interesting. I think Samuels caught the ball, but I wasn't a thousand percent sure. And I don't understand how they utilize this system. If there's uncertainty, you're supposed to stop and look. If they were sure that that was a catch, then they're better than me. But advantage NC State. All credit to the Wolfpack taking the shot downfield in the red zone. Here's Samuels. He's stopped for no gain as we get to the back end of this first quarter. Greer Martini with the tackle. Here's that catch by Samuels. I think it hits his arm as it juggles loose. I thought he kept it up, but I wasn't sure. And there's a good definitive look. And then as he rolled over, too. Looked to me like he came up yeah, with it. It's a, it's a heck of a play, but there's one bobble point there. And then the second one as he rolls over. But the replay official is so good, he was sure of it. He saw it live. Absolutely. Shame on me. NC State driving. We thought it would be a good one. So far it is after one all tied at seven. And we'll return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC. Back at Notre Dame Stadium, Mike Tirico, Doug Flutie, Catherine Tappan, all even at seven, a blocked punt 
Jermaine Pratt linebacker for NC State fell on it for the score. Notre Dame responded with a two play drive just 29 seconds later. Durham Smythe catching a 25 yarder from Brandon Winbush. 42 yard completion to Stephon Lewis has North Carolina State in the red zone as we begin the second quarter. And Ryan Finley looking up top. Check it down. It's incomplete. Tried to get to Dylan Ottenreef. His redshirt freshman tight end who yet who is yet to have a reception this season. Third and ten coming up. Interesting watching this nickel package. Five defensive backs. Their name has been subbing in the game in these third and long spots. Find number one. Find where he is. He's right here now. He's the guy on third down. Leading receiver Jalen Samuels. 41 career touchdowns. Third in NC State history. Irish show pressure. They bring five. Good rush by Morgan. Finley fires end zone. What a grab! Touchdown! Kelvin Harmon. The guy that goes up and gets the jump ball's got another one. And the Wolfpack are on top. First of all, you got to pick it up and give your quarterback a chance. Gillespie picks it up nicely. Nice slide. Nice slide by Finley to get a lane to throw the football. Puts it over the top. Coming out of the slot. Number three, little wheel route. Harmon goes up over the top. Good coverage, but you got to find the ball. And Harmon does a great job with contact of going up and tight pointing the ball. Go get it. Ugly looking extra point by Carson Wise through a couple of Irish arms, but it's not through. And NC State on top of 15 yard touchdown on third and 10. And Finley has thrown his 12th touchdown of the year. So NC State on top. Those of you spinning back and forth between games, we've set this up. Both coaches talked about it when interviewed by Catherine pregame. What's going to give? It's a battle. It's a heavyweight battle. Both teams rank sixth in rush yards or running yards allowed. The touchdowns are commensurate and 100 yard games. Notre Dame's at 10. North Carolina State hasn't allowed one. No one's got to 80 rushing yards as an individual against Dave Doran's defense. And so far, after the opening quarter, Doug, the Irish have run it 10 times for 58 yards. How do you think they're doing? the run game against this stout defense well, very inconsistent they bust at one and they got maybe an eight yard gain on another but for the most part the NC State D line is doing the job of shutting down the run game big play also came in the pass game so it's going to have to be some of the play action game and big chunks in the pass game and pick your opportunities in the run game you still have to pound the ball because that's what Notre Dame does but it's been very inconsistent NC State D line is doing their job we see what Sanders did with the last kickoff. Ben Bard with a good line drive. And here comes C.J. Sanders from the three. Got two good blocks to get out to the 27-yard line. And that's where this Notre Dame offense will take over. Doug, you talked about that catch. What a terrific play by Kelvin Harmon. He uses one arm to kind of get his body around where he can get the left arm out there. He does it every well, week. He does. goes up, high points it, reaches. Actually, it's really a one-handed, left-handed catch. He got his right arm around to find a chance, but he's just got a knack for timing his jump, going up strong to get the ball while contact is happening. Dexter Williams in a fake to him in the pass, complete to Chase Claypool, the receiver. He's at the 34-yard line, gain of six. A couple of NC State injury updates. Here's Catherine. Yeah, Mike, Naheem Hines has returned to the sideline after having x-rays. They're putting a brace on his right ankle. He, his, he will return as tolerated. As for junior defensive lineman Adreas Bryan, he has a left leg injury. His return is questionable. All right, Catherine, thank you. Quick run there with Williams, and it's very close to a Notre Dame first down at the 38-yard line. Speaking of injuries, Dexter Williams' ankle injury has kept uh, one of the electric players on this Irish offense out of the lineup. I believe that was enough for a first down. There he is again with a run across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Doug, you've got Adams, you've got Tony Jones Jr., but Williams also a very dynamic runner. No doubt about it. Very, He's the explosive type like Josh Adams that can take it the distance. Uh, a little stronger than he was a year or two ago. Second and two. He's getting a good look on this series. Tackled by that ankle, but might be close to another first down at the 48-yard line. 
He is. They'll move the chains a minute and a half into the second quarter. They're firming things up in the offensive line. There's no penetration. Not a lot of push yet, but not much penetration. The officiating crew took a minute to figure out the ball was on the 48, which is where the first down marker was. So they slow the game down, and now here we go. Williams to the right. And NC State waiting there. Jermaine Pratt, the touchdown man off the block punt. Wrap him, threw him down. Well, Chubb slanted down, and he practiced straight to the outside and had a free free run. This defensive line can take a lot of blocks off the linebacker level. They occupy double teams, hold their ground, free up their linebackers to tackle. So after Williams gets five plays on this drive, back comes the thousand-yard rusher Josh Adams into the game. Second and ten, they'll read it, and Wimbush. Nothing open, so he throws it out of bounds. Equinemius St. Brown was well covered by Jonathan Alston. We have a whistle and a flag thrown in the area where the linebackers started that play, about seven yards from the line of scrimmage. There's no penalty for an eligible downfield. Quarterback threw the ball away. Third down. So before third down, Doug, very interesting. These teams that are the best run defenses in the country, the best teams in the country. Six of the top 14 are the top six in rush yards allowed with North Carolina State at number six. We were talking college football is coming full circle. Back to the teams <laughs> that run the football win. And when you stop the run, you win. All that spread them out passing is starting to slide a little to the wayside. I'm laughing because every coordinator says, hey, we got to stop the run. Well, people are doing it and they're winning. Third and ten, Wimbush taking off. First time he's done this here today, and he's got the first down and more. Wimbush all the way to the 32-yard line, a run of 19, and that can be a difference maker for Notre Dame in the run game today, the effectiveness of the QB. He's patient with it. The eyes are up the field, but he sees the crease open up, and the first move right in here is what got him the first down. little pop to the outside with a, a block by Stefferson down the field. From the 32, a first down throw with Wimbush to the sideline and inbounds. A gain of 9 for Equinemius St. Brown, who has not had the explosive year this year. It's more run than throw base for the Irish here in 2017. Nice job of tiptoeing on the sideline. Comeback route wide open. Just step and throw and deliver the ball. Nice job by St. Brown. Second and short. Thought about the toss. That was a mistake. Something wasn't right there. And when it's not right, Bradley Chubb is very happy to have another tackle for loss. <laughs> Chubb's getting caught in the middle. It's like an option play. He says, the heck with that. I've got the quarterback all the way. He'll take those any day of the week. Actually, I think Josh Adams took off on him a little early. Okay. And Wimbush was afraid to make the pitch a little too far. Well, Chubb's already got 14 tackles for loss. Now 15. And that was a gift. That was the easiest one I'll have all year. And the sacks don't count as tackles for loss? Third and three, Adams right, got the first down, and Adams inside the 15. Down to the 10, it'll be first and goal for the Irish after a 15-yard gain for Adams. Well, run the ball a little bit at Chubb here. Here's Chubb. He gets sealed by Durham Smythe. Nice job getting up on the blocks and getting up through, so making some headway with the run game now for Notre Dame. First and goal, another run to the right with tight ends. That's the same play, and that's Adams taking it to the five-yard line. The great offensive lineman for Notre Dame to the left. Flag comes down back into the play, way opposite where the ball was. The play was run to the right. This is a flag on a couple of players who were over to the left side of the end zone, engaged in blocking. I think Chase Claypool was there for Notre Dame. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 83, mm -hmm. offense, unsportsmanlike conduct, number two, defense, penalties offset. It was not offset. Number two and number 83 is first unsportsmanlike of the game. It's second down. If they get two, they get tossed. Since it was a post play foul, the down remains. It'll be second and goal with the five. On the backside, continuing his block out of bounds. Stevens doesn't like it. Well, there's a little, that can be taunting. There's a smack to the face. So either way, a little bit of taunting by doing the clap in the face, and the other side got it on the, on the slap in the face. And, and you know what, Doug, you say that. Either way, you're right. They could have called it either way. But now, because those count towards ejection, calling both becomes much more important than it used to be. 
So they've got one strike, two, and they're out. Second to go from the five, up top for St. Brown. That's out of bounds, incomplete, ruled on the field. There was contact there. The There's a flag out. in the end zone. Alston, who was a wide receiver until this year, almost made a great play. Holding. Holding. Number five. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Tennessee's against an eligible receiver, and the ball went beyond the line of scrimmage. First down. He almost uh, got one foot in like a receiver. Hard play action. He gives a little grab and tug there to hang in there, and then goes after the football. No doubt about that call. Actually, he stayed in bounds, yeah. too, if it hadn't it, been called. It was a pick. It was a great play. It was a good call. On the penalty, not a good call that it was an interception. First and goal for the Irish at the two, trying to tie the game. Adams, right. Adams met in the hole. Keeps going, but has stopped Jarius Moorhead. The sophomore, 217 pounds, put the strong in strong safety there. Tell you what, there was a crease to the end zone, wasn't there? And then Moorhead came up and just, you expected to see Josh Adams go in the end zone, and he went backward. Mm, that is strength. That, that's a big running back, 6'2", 225. Already more rushing yards than anyone's had against NC State, but not the touchdown there, thanks to Moorhead. But the Irish waiting on the front doorstep. Well, here's the shortest penalty in college football <laughs> history. And it's all right to guess down there. It, yeah. It, it's all right to guess because if you make the big play defensively. All side. Defense. Number 98. Half the distance to the goal. Second down. Well, Brandon Wimbush and this Irish offense have been so good when they get inside the 20. Wimbush has been darn near perfect down here in terms of scores 25 scores on 25 red zone trips and 23 touchdowns those are unbelievable numbers second and an inch or two Adams gonna be taken down for a loss big play with Jermaine Pratt who's had a terrific first half right in that spot Penetration by Street at the line of scrimmage. Coming in, he causes, causes him to bounce, and there comes Pratt straight into the outside to make the tackle. The officials came in to stop the clock for some reason. And now they put the ball back down at the three-yard line. Platt, Pratt, who was a free safety, has been moved to this linebacker's spot. Had a big impact on this quarter. So now it's third and goal from the three. And Wimbush designed run. Cuts to the right. And into the end zone for the touchdown. Roman Gabriel on through Russell Wilson. Of course, highlighted his career at the end at NC State. Or at Wisconsin. He started those first three years at North Carolina State. And that could be the next player we talk about as the top players coming out of NC State. The defensive end, Bradley Chubb, but his team, so good against the run, just saw Notre Dame go down the field 14 plays, 72 yards. Brandon Wimbush runs the touchdown in. All even at 14. Naheem Hines out with that injury Catherine told you about. So Jalen Samuels, the do-it-all guy, for the Wolfpack, takes this kickoff at the seven. And Samuels will, with a flag down, be brought down at the 23. A lot of penalties so far on a North Carolina State team that usually is pretty solid. In terms of playing sharp football and mistake-free football. During the return. Already eight penalties. Legal block in the back. Number 13. Return and team. now nine. Ten yards from the end of the run. First down. Well, interesting how this first part of the game has played out. Let's start with the North Carolina State rush defense against Notre Dame. Do you like the Irish game plan so far? I do like the game plan. I think the defensive line's done a great job. And slowly but surely, the Notre Dame offensive line mm -hmm. is getting assignment sound now and getting a little push here, a little push there, being more consistent now in the run game. Take Himes out of the offense for NC State. That's a problem. But you see that they've got other people to get the job done. I think the weapons on the outside, some of those jump balls down the field and one-on-one -on -one coverage will become key. And Notre Dame's secondary will be tested as we go through. 
Jalen Samuels lines up as the back here from the 13 straight option brings it in brought down by Tavon Cody. Doug, you talk about a player who has changed his approach to the game and changed his performance on the field. It's Coney, number four. Yeah, here's a guy that wasn't a starter at the beginning of the year. Very athletic guy. He's finally caught up and bought in, and he is playing at a high level. Last week, he had a breakout game. Now he's playing with a lot of confidence, chasing to the ball quickly. Brian Kelly told us he's trusting the teaching now. He's not trying to freelance. He's doing what he's taught. Clark Lee, the linebacker coach who came with Mike Elko from Wake Forest, has done a terrific job along with the new defensive coordinator. Well, so four, Samuels gets it back. He's not going anywhere. That's four carries for Samuels, and he has negative three yards. So Notre Dame is finding number one when he's in the backfield and doing a good job. You know, Samuels can do a little of everything. He's thrown the ball. He's caught the ball. He's lined up in the backfield. He's blocked as a tight end. Hines was the dynamic guy back there, so they are missing him. Down by the student section, noisy for third and long. Third and long situation is the quarterback just be smart with the football. Don't force it down the field. And Finley, who hasn't thrown a pick in 11 and a half months, puts it up top and incomplete. Coverage was again Troy Pride Jr. playing more and more in these nickel five defensive back situations. Kelvin Harmon, the intended receiver, and NC State will kick it into the wind. Well, Troy Pride's got a little easier. He is outside technique. He's going to have help to the inside anyway. He can sit off in coverage and just catch the receiver. Actually, Finley put the ball up real early there for a long yardage situation. He does not feel comfortable holding the ball. Into the wind, A.J. Cole. Be tough to catch. Fink, can he take it on a clean hop? No, he's going to let it go. It was one of those, I kind of got it. Oh, I don't want to get it. And it turns into a 50-yard punt with no return. And the Irish will take over at their own 40. Halfway through the second, trying to stay alive in the college football playoff race. A good one in South Bend. There's no taking easy way out. Nobody said there was an easy way when my mom was working two jobs to get me and my brother and sister through school. When we were going through those shelters and those homes, there was no easy way out. She worked for everything she had to make sure that we could have what we had. So that means when I hit that bag, I'm not taking the easy way out. There's a great backstory to Josh Adams. That is his mom, April, ready to celebrate his son's, her son's 21st birthday tomorrow. And Catherine Tappan will help us tell the story of Adams and his mom and that path, a very difficult one to his success so far. He's blocking here for Brandon Wimbush, who gets out of a would-be tackle, gets to the edge, and he'll gain five yards on that one. Catherine? Well, Mike, April Adams made the 10-hour drive yesterday from Pennsylvania with Josh's two older siblings to be here today. She told me yesterday Josh's upbringing taught him that there are no shortcuts in life, and the hardships they had to endure are why Josh is so humble. She said she wanted to raise her children to have a chance, so her sacrifice and tears would pay off, Mike. And Josh, when he talks about his mom, talks glowingly. That's the reason he's so humble and works so hard. He's the play-action fake. Wimbush is up top for Equinidius. St. Brown couldn't bring it in. But another flag on North Carolina State. If it is, it'll be their 10th. Let's see if it's going to be on St. Brown and go the other way. I initially thought St. Brown. Defense, number 24. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. I initially thought St. Brown pushed off, but Austin actually reaches with his left arm five. There's a little push, but reaches with the left arm and kind of gave a little tug and a hold, and the official was behind St. Brown and saw that arm. From this angle, you see the left arm come to the back of St. Brown. There's an offense. I think that should have been let go, Coach. They did correct the penalty. It is on five. You're right, Doug. It was a right arm push by St. Brown that initiated the contact. As I said, penalty 10 on the Wolfpack. First down, Wimbush. That long throw, St. Brown, the catch, swung out of bounds at the 35-yard line by Sean Boone. Fans wanted a flag. They don't get it. Now, I want to go back to Adams and to April Adams for a second. And when I spoke with Josh about his mom, Doug, he talked about all of what Catherine said and how much it has meant to him. And when people ask about his leadership, about his faith, about working through the hard times 
of last year's four and eight season of those long days of practice in the weight room. He thinks and he's inspired by what his mom did and what she sacrificed to give him the opportunity to succeed. And boy is he succeeding this year. Here he is lowering his shoulder and a gain of five yards and a set up third and one. It just makes him that much more determined because he had he's so grateful for the opportunity that his mother has given him. Going quick third and one read it give it to Adams and he's got the first down at the 26 yard line Catherine. April told me she she watches with mixed emotions, mixed focus, because her number one concern is just making sure Josh is safe on the field. She keeps her eyes on him at all times, guys, even when he's on the sidelines. But she also said his success, the Heisman hype, it's been a wonderful experience. She's in complete awe, Mike. So those five carries Dexter Williams had, she was just watching 33 on the sideline. Making sure he didn't trip over a helmet on the sideline or something, right? That's, that's a parent watching Mom. their kid. We, those of us who've been there, you know that's what you do. Here he is again for a run to the 22-yard line. These last couple of runs, he's shown great pace. It's not the north-south, it's kind of a stutter step, let, step, let it happen thing with a push. So it hasn't been the explosive runs, but good hard pushes. And here he is knocking on the door of 100 yards in the first half. Second and six, Wimbush up top, end zone shot, incomplete. Terrific defense on Stefferson that time. On the corner, Nick McLeod, who was a starter, but has gone to a reserve role, at least the last two games, broke it up. Press coverage, little bluff, little put, but he just runs with him, try for, finds the football. Get the head around, find the ball. Great play on the ball with the right arm. And Stefferson is a dynamic speed guy out there at the wideout position. Excellent play on McLeod. So here comes third down. Adams is out. Tony Jones and Dexter Williams are the two running backs in the game. Jones is lined up as a slot receiver. Third in from the top. Wimbush. Time, nothing open. Keeping it alive. Fans say run. He says throw. And it is caught for a first down at the 11 by Durham Smythe. What a play. Does he keep the toe in here? They've got both toes in. He catches it. They're still on the ground. Ruling on the field is a catch inbound. Previous play is under review. And he holds the ball through the process as he goes to the ground and out of bounds and has it secured. This one was so tight they want to take a look at it one more time. Catch, then you go look for the feet. And you'd have to see something to determine that he was definitively out to change the call. That looks like a catch to me. Terrific. That's amazing. How about Austin not get? I mean, there was a window of about two inches to get that pass in. Yeah. Again, do you see anything that you're sure he's out of bounds or those feet are not down? Smythe, who had 13 catches last year, had the touchdown. Wow, that's pretty. <laughs> that would work on Sundays, too. He's going to want a still shot of that. <laughs> Full stretch, ball in the hands, toes. I mean, Ballet there up on the tip of the toes. Well, Chip Long, the offensive coordinator in the white cap there, calling the plays for this Notre Dame offense who came over from Memphis, the 34 year old. He coaches the tight ends as well. And they have terrific tight ends here. And Smythe, that was a Mac, Nick Wisher. Ruling on the field stands, catch, first down. Brock Wright in the freshman Cole Komet. Talk about Brock Wright. He was in at the fullback position, the extra tight end on a couple of runs that got them started. They got Notre Dame started and got him down into the end zone on the last drive. Terrific tight end group. They have already easily exceeded the performance of that position last year. How about the patience of Wimbush staying behind the line of scrimmage on that play? <laughs> Buying tight, looking around. The whole house was saying, run! First and ten. You can get a first down at the one. Wimbush wants a touchdown. Stefferson! Foot down, but out of bounds. Incomplete. He and Nick McLeod back for act two. I thought his right foot came That's down. Let's see if something came down out of bounds first. Let's see. Catch. Look down. Oh, just when that toe comes down. <laughs> I mean, a, a good pedicure would have gotten him a, a clear <laughs> touchdown. Just the toe under the line. I think. Let's uh, take another look here. 
And it was. Oh, you know, I think that's oh, it. Oh, that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. We're going to throw the review. I thought he was in live, and you get that look at it. I thought McLeod did a heck of a job of pushing him while he was in the air to get him out of bounds, oh, but good. just inches shy. And sure enough, the foot's down. Sensational replay, guys, down in the truck. Rob Highland, our producer, Pierre Musa, our director, our awesome Notre Dame on NBC crew. Look at that. That's a clean look at that. Uh, How about Stephenson going up and getting it now? We can go back to the catch part of it. Perfectly yes. placed ball, go up and make the catch. McLeod was in good position. It was a wide side throw. You're throwing from the far hash to the wide side of the end zone. The ball's in the air a long time, perfectly placed. And they've got this fabulous new video board. After review, the ruling on the field is that the receiver had a toe inbounds. Touchdown. So all the fans had a look at it as you did at home. And they cue up the band as Stefferson has his second touchdown of the year. I hate throwing those wide side fade routes like that. I always like throwing it to the short side of the field much easier. Beautiful throw and catch. McLeod was in great position and made the play. Just barely got down in bounds. We're getting a good rush on the end of these kicks for Justin Yoon. Extra point and bang through. And for the first time today, Notre Dame leads. Cliches get worn out, right? Game of inches, you've heard it enough. Well, how about a game of centimeters here? Barely Smythe's toes inbounds. First down. Barely Stefferson's left great toe in the green, not in the white. Notre Dame 21, NC State 14. When you're ready to buy a house, a mortgage from U.S. Bank could help make it possible. And a dedicated financial partner will be with you every step of the way. See about pre-qualifying today. U.S. Bank. The power of possible. DirecTV has been rated number one in customer satisfaction over cable for 17 years running. But some people still like cable, just like some people like banging their head on a low ceiling, drinking spoiled milk, camping in poison ivy, getting a paper cut, and having their arm trapped in a vending machine. But for everyone else, there's DirecTV. For number one rated customer satisfaction over cable, switch to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Check this out, bro. What's that, bro, Heem? I switched to GEICO and got more. More savings on car insurance? Yeah, professor, and more, like renter's insurance. More ways to save. Nice, bro tata chip. That's not all, bro teen shake. GEICO has motorcycle and RV insurance, too. Ooh, that's a lot more. Oh, yeah. I'm all about more Teddy Roosevelt. GEICO. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Top Performances is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Let's take you back to the first ever North Carolina State Notre Dame meeting, January 1st, 2003. Phillip Rivers threw for 228. A couple of scores. Wolfpack won easily 28-6. to six. What a terrific career Phillip Rivers had at uh, North Carolina State. Over 50 starts. Doug had the pleasure of calling a bunch of his games in college, and, and now a like, dozen or so. I think I've called 20, 25 Phillip Rivers games in my career. Go back to when he was at NC State. His dad was a high school coach, and that little shot put delivery was because he was a seven-year-old going to practice with his dad, and the ball was too big. So that's the only way he could throw it. He kept it, rewrote the NC State record books, and has had a great career with the San Diego, now Los Angeles, Chargers. 
Jalen Samuels on this kick return. He stopped shy of the 25 yard line. NC State down seven, banged up a little bit. Here's Catherine Tappen with more. Yeah, banged up indeed, Mike. We talked about Naheem Hines. He's still on the sideline trying to work on that right ankle, see if he could go back in the game. Junior defensive lineman Andreas Bryant, he's got that left leg injury. His return is questionable. Defensive tackle Justin Jones, they put a left arm brace on him. He's going to try and go back in this game. But those are significant injuries right there, Mike, for NC State. Oh, they sure are, Catherine. Uh, you talked about Hines as we got ready for this game and his great ability and dug two of those defensive tackles against a good rushing Notre Dame offense. That's a problem for NC State. They're going to have to score some points here. So let's see what Ryan Finley can do. First down with time. He takes a shot downfield. His big play receiver, Kelvin Harmon, one more time, shy of midfield. That's a 23 yard gain for Harmon. Great patience on the route. Let him fly all the way across the field. The play action fake gave him all kinds of time to throw. Nice touch on the throw. He's going to, they're going to have to depend a lot more on Finley throwing the football. Those of you flipping back and forth from games, Hines, their running back, was out. Outstanding part of their offense. 100 yards each of the last three NC State games. Little play action, flea flicker up top. Nobody's open. Everything's covered. Notre Dame. Stayed very disciplined, kept the pressure on the quarterback, and kept the coverage downfield. Again, Finley with a good decision, though. I mean, he had pressure in his face off the flea flicker. It wasn't there, got rid of the ball. And incompletion's okay. Second and ten. He keeps saying good decision, good decision. He, he 328 the in a row. I mean, he, <laughs> he, he's protecting the football. You know, I, I played a year with Tom Brady. I used to think interceptions were just part of the game. They happen. Right. Tom says no, they don't have to happen. And this guy hasn't thrown one in his last 328 passes. Second and 10. Here's his slant incomplete all over Drew Tranquil with tight coverage on Jacoby Myers. It'll bring up third down and 10. Quick passing game and Drew Tranquil just breaking on short routes. Notre Dame has decided they want to take the short route away. Beat us deep. NC State defense a little bit banged up, struggling a little bit. Irish can take a timeout. They have defensive confusion here. So they'll use their second of the half. Notre Dame, second timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. Yeah, I want to talk about Dave Doran here for a little bit because uh, we've seen North Carolina State over the last 20 years with some really nice men, really nice people as their head coach. Mike O'Kane, Chuck Amato, and then Tom O'Brien. Doran, who was a tight end at Drake, and then a linebackers coach at Kansas, then a defensive coordinator, then went to Wisconsin, was part of their very successful defense coordinator there for half a decade, and then the opportunity to be a head coach. Took over the program. Jerry Kill helped build in Northern Illinois. A couple of matching championships there in Northern Illinois, and now year five at NC State. And after all the fight for facilities and all the other stuff in Raleigh by guys like Mike O'Kane and Chuck Amato and Tom O'Brien for six years, Doran came in, felt like the culture needed a little charge of energy. And this 45 year old has it, brings it on the defensive side, and he's grown a team with a whole bunch of 50 year seniors feeling like this is their moment. And they've shown it six consecutive wins. I'm trying to get the big one here in South Bend. Irish rush three. Finley is flushed. His pass to the sideline at the 41 is incomplete. It's out of bounds. Myers went to get it. He caught the ball as he went to the ground, but couldn't stay in bounds apparently. And it looks like it'll be fourth down. Another punt for North Carolina State. Well, Gillespie missed his block on the edge, which made this a more, much more difficult throw than it needed to be. And boy, just a half a step out of bounds. You're talking into there's the block. Boy. Acquire just zipped inside of him and it flushed him out and made much more difficult pass. And Julian Acquire has come on very strong of late into that strong wind you hear. Yeah, so maybe it's Finkel just lets everybody crazy. get out of there and it'll be you know, down we'll off of it. inside like, the 15 at the 12 yard line. So 40 on the punt for Cole. Long field for the Irish. They've scored back to back touchdowns and Notre Dame is on top by seven. Coming up to halftime, State Farm Halftime Report, Liam McHugh and Chris Sims down on the field. 
Highlights from around the country, including number two Penn State and Ohio State, jumped out to that big lead, maintaining it for the moment at the shoe. Well, here with Chris and Liam thinking about this first half where Notre Dame has scored on three of its last four possessions to take a 21-14 lead. State Farm halftime report coming up. Doug, what, just tell everybody what you just told me in the break here, what you're feeling over the last 10 minutes or so. You know, it feels like Notre Dame's taking control. There have been some injuries that have set NC State back, but it's only a 21-14 game, and Notre Dame's backed up. Backed up with their own 12 to drop, start of this drive, and it's a couple of yard gain for Adams running left. But the ability to run the football is what makes it feel like Notre Dame is starting to take control. I think a big part of that are the two injuries in the D line for North Carolina State. Andreas Bryant a backup. He has come back in 91 for the Wolfpack. Justin Jones had his left arm injury. There is Adams to 100 first running back against this sixth ranked rush defense to get to triple figures. On second and seven, Winbush climbs the pocket, rips it in the middle, and the crossing tight end, Smythe, who's having a very big first half, has it at the 31 to move the chains. Watch your left guard and left guard and tackle the, the studs on the deep offensive line. Both took care of Chubb as Winbush was patient on the route with Durham Smythe. At time Chubb comes all over to make the tackle on Adams a three yard run. You know you get so used to and so spoiled by Josh Adams gain a nine gain a tank in a 38 in a 60 four yard run you will take every single time any day three four <laughs> yard runs is a first down coach. Here he is after a gain of three and that's what NC State does get onto the other side of the line Bradley Chubb who was hanging out in the NC State offices all week. He just wanted to study and be ready for this one. He was just slow playing that. He had quarterback and running back covered, so he went ahead with the handoff on the zone read. Didn't matter. He was going to get either one of them. Here's some cheers from the Wolfpack fans who have uh, come to trying to get their team to come up with a third down stop. Extremely athletic. On that pass completion, your two best offensive line linemen, NFL picks, they double team Chubb with the two best offensive linemen to make sure he didn't get there. So they split Adams out empty backfield third and eight pressure holds up for the moment. Wimbush tries to run out of trouble and fires complete uh, incomplete now as Mack comes to the ground and couldn't hang on. And let's see if he's shaken up. That was a Mack went down in a heap as he tried to catch that on the sideline injured Notre Dame player. And NC State's athletic training staff over there to aid for a moment before the Irish staff comes across the field to please put two twenty-two on the game clock. Two twenty-two. Let's take a peek here. What happens at the very end with Mac? Yeah, head comes down first on the ground. Couldn't hold on to it and reaches up for his head right away. That was a Mack who had 13 catches his uh, freshman year has come through to be actually the top reception man for the Irish thus far this year with 17. From Las Vegas Wimbush made a good throw. Tough to come up with and uh, the athletic training staff. Will check out Mack. We see so many. Head injuries and the constant attention to that. Catherine showed us in the pregame. Uh, many of the Notre Dame players are wearing these Avisis helmets, which are some of the new technology, science, and the entrepreneurship. The business world is uh, trying to come together, and I've seen it at the NFL level. They're trying to do as much as they can to make football as safe as possible. And one of the places is trying to increase helmet technology to the point that, as Mac was so great, so glad to see, gets up and is being assisted off. By the Notre Dame training staff. One of the things they're even talking about, Doug, is more position specific helmets down the line, given the contact that's made on players, given where they're playing receivers, linemen, quarterbacks. You can see Mac is uh, needing the assistance the newer of helmet. Rob Hunt to come over. The newer helmet you're talking about actually has kind of an outer shell that collapses and mm -hmm. has some give to it. You have a uh, 
several Notre Dame players who are uh, wearing that. They're very expensive too. That's part of the story of the uh, science and the business part of this. So Matt comes off. It's fourth down and the Irish will punt it away. They've had one block today. Wilson gets this one away with the wind. Luckily are back at the 22 yard line. Remember he's not the regular punt returner so just catch it. Fair catch made. With 213 left and two timeouts. North Carolina State will try to tie this game before halftime. The return game has been so dynamic for NC State all year long with Hines back there. That's a big part of their package that's missing now. And now you don't have that home run hitter in your backfield. So Finley, it falls on his back. He's got to take the ball the length of the field. He's very good at the short passing game. He, they don't want to get caught up in having to pass protect with this defensive line in Notre Dame. Kelvin Harmon in the slot number three has made some big catches so far. He's in the slot at the bottom of the screen. Samuels, their most electrifying player in the slot at the top. Here's Finley to work. Look out. Almost hit, but he throws it and it is held on to. Good catch by Stefan Lewis. Only a three man rush, which gives Finley a chance to hang on the ball and let people work. Lewis, you'll see him come around and work into the middle of the field. Good patience, way to wait, stick it in a tight window. It's eight men in coverage, so there's some tight windows down the field. And Jay Hayes had the right idea. We're going to get the sack, but he's trying to get the wind up from Finley and knock it away. At the 37 with a minute 45 till halftime. Four man rush this time. Finley surveys, nothing's open, trying to buy time, gets rid of it. A lot of bodies incomplete. And two Notre Dame players hit each other and they are shaken up on the sideline. Greer Martini was one of the two players and he took out fellow starting Come linebacker Niles Morgan. Notre so Notre Dame's two starting linebackers who line up next to each other. Both take each other out on this play. Which Martini coming over here. As he and Morgan collide Morgan takes out Martini. Mart Martini was fortunate to get his legs off the ground before this collision happened. And he's just coming back remember from a surgical procedure 15 days ago had a meniscus injury. And uh, incredibly was back at practice in full go. And he's walking back towards the Notre Dame huddle back on the field so he looks to be OK. And they're checking on Morgan last year's top tackler and the second leading tackler for the Irish thus far this year. This has been a mostly healthy season for Notre Dame have not had many significant games missed to injury because from starters other than the quarterback Wimbush missing the game against North Carolina with a foot injury. After the incompletion second and ten. Three man rush Finley throws complete. It's Jacoby Myers shy of midfield. The nickel Sean Crawford with the stop. Move the chains for the Wolfpack. At some point Finley's going to have to try to hurt Notre Dame with his legs by getting out of the pocket and running with the coverages that Notre Dame is running. Down to a minute 20 to go again same look from Notre Dame with a three man rush and Finley incomplete. Contact here comes the flag. It's a correct call. Samuels was the intended receiver. Hand was on him throughout, and the flag was thrown from in front of the NC State bench, the official on that side. Pass interference, number 27, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic. First down. Interesting Samuels is now starting to chirp with Sean Crawford. Yeah it was Crawford it wasn't 27 it was 20 and he bends around to go to the middle of the field and Crawford yeah. grabs a handful of jersey no doubt about it. Beautiful throw and, and full credit to the official on that far side who couldn't see that and somehow the official and each one has their own eligible receiver but no one on the near side could see that complete. Yeah. I was throwing it from up here I just couldn't reach the field. That's another wrong number 20 is correct. Niles Morgan five for the Irish is back in the game. We saw him go out with injury a couple of plays ago. North Carolina State mounting a good drive here. They're at the 35 with a buck 15 till halftime. And they get the ball to start the second half. 
And as he throws, Finley complete for a gain of about six or seven yards. And one more time, it's Myers. Finley slow to get up, and the Wolfpack take a timeout. This is one of those RPOs. He sees an opening, so he pulls it on a run play and throws the quick pass. Gets a tough completion, takes a hit for it. That's the, that's the chuck and duck, right? You turn it loose and turn that back shoulder. You can see he's still Dalen feeling Hayes. the effects of that Dalen Hayes hit. An eligible downfield, number 70, offense, five-yard penalty. Well, there's your, repeat first down. There's your RPOs for you, Coach. You know, you're trying to get away with calling a running play and throwing the football at the same time, and you figure the ball will be out quick enough that people aren't downfield, and everyone around the country no, no does No charge it. timeout from North Carolina State. No charge timeout. What is it, three first yards? Down. Yes, the RPOs are the run pass option plays that everybody seems to be running now in college and pro football. And in college football, you have a three yard belt that the offensive linemen have to stay from the line of scrimmage before they can go uh, downfield and be illegally downfield. And number 70, Jerome Prescott got three or more yards down, backs him up five. So as you heard, the timeout is washed away. Because of the penalty, and it's first and 15 at the 40. And the Wolfpack still have two chances to stop it. Irish drops seven in coverage here. Finley flushed, throws that one up for grabs and throws it out of bounds to the sideline incomplete. Julian O'Quara coming in again. So the sophomore class for Notre Dame, Doug, Dalen Hayes, Julian O'Quara. Khalid Kareem, Anakumbo, Ogun, DG, we thought we'd see a little bit more of this year. We have it, but those guys, the sophomores, they're the edge pass rushers that have had a bigger impact as this season has gone on. And for the most part, it's been Aquar and Hayes, Dalen Hayes, nine. They are athletic, slippery, and have those one-on-one -on -one type moves to get to the quarterback. NC State scored on a block punt. Notre Dame responded quickly in the first quarter. And after a 14-7 NC State lead, the Irish scored a back-to-back -back drives in this second quarter. Screen set up for Gillespie. And Reggie Gillespie is brought down on a good tracing play by Tavon. It'll be third and long coming up with 50 seconds till halftime here in South Bend. And a timeout taken by the Wolfpack. Timeout. North Carolina State. That's their second charge timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. Well, those of you who uh, may have been watching that... Uh, Ohio State Penn State game big stories here Naheem Hines was hurt he's their best running back explosive player ankle injury for this track star in the first quarter it's changed the tone of the game no 100 yard rushes against North Carolina State all year until Josh Adams in this half he's over a thousand yards in this terrific season Brandon Wimbush just continues to produce two passing touchdowns for the Irish one rushing involved in all three and that has been the story of Brandon Wimbush's season. He is now responsible for 21 Notre Dame touchdowns running or passing in this third ever matchup between these teams. Last year was 10-3 in seven inches of rain as the outer bands of a hurricane hit. And neither coach even really paid attention to the film. Just forget about that. Nothing to carry over last year to this. Here's a formation into the boundary, which leaves one on one to the wide side of the field. See if Finley goes that way. On third down, it's covered, and he is sacked. Finley brought down. Good pressure all the way across the front from the Irish. Not sure if they're going to give Tranquil or Trumbetti the credit. Maybe they'll share it. It's a loss of seven either way. But Troy Pride is one-on-one -on -one out onto the wide side. Actually, this is the short side of the field. Samuel's the guy that they like in these situations. Here's the wide side one-on-one -on -one look. Troy Pride, good coverage to the wide side of the field. So you, you, you get a quarterback holding the ball, and then the pressure gets there. Good coverage all over the field. Finley likes to do the quick rhythm stuff. A little uncomfortable holding the ball. Now, sharp clock management here by North Carolina State. They've got one timeout. Let it all the way run down to 4-3. Take the timeout. Timeout. North Carolina State. Third and final timeout. The fourth down play will 30 seconds. end the half. Timeout for North Carolina State. And Full they'll timeout. throw it to the end zone. 
you wonder, well, can Notre Dame take a, a timeout? They only had one left coming in here. Would they take a timeout for some reason? Well, it, then if NC State picks up the first down, they extend their opportunities to score. So why give them more plays to score here? So clock managed properly by the Wolfpack, and they'll have a chance into the wind with Doug. The one thing they have that's an advantage over Notre Dame, size of the receivers, Harmon 6'3", Myers 6'2", Lewis 6'2". Go get a jump ball here. And Harmon is the guy that would probably be the guy going up for it. And there's no doubt Finley has the arm to get it to the end zone from here. The key on this would be hang on to it as long as you can before throwing it to allow your guys to get down there. That's Mike Elko who came from Wake Forest. By the way, what a Wake Forest today. Beating Louisville and they'll be in here next week. But Elko has really given this defense a jolt of energy this season as I'm playing fast and playing smart. He sends three defenders back to the goal line. As NC State will try to finish the half with a jump ball touchdown. Three receivers to the right. One to the left to end this first half. Here's Finley uncorking downfield, and it is knocked down. Tremendously played by Julian Love. Saw it, went to get it from the back, and knocked it down. And that brings the half to an end. NC State gets the ball to start the second half. You want to see the Notre Dame band? NBCSports.com. You want to see Liam McHugh and Chris Sims, which I do. They're on the State Farm Halftime Report. Coming up after these messages and a word from your local NBC station. Great Saturday afternoon of college football around the country. Best game on the board at this point. This one right here. Irish leading by seven, holding NC State to 20 rush yards. They missed Naheem Hines, their running back, with an ankle injury in the first half. And penalties, 11 for North Carolina State. They only committed 15 in their last three games combined. And that is part of the reason Notre Dame's been able to take this edge on this very cool and damp end of October, typical South Bend day. Feels like it's below freezing. First time we're talking wind chill all year. NC State deferred after winning the toss to start the game so they get the ball to start the third Jalen Samuels after good hang time will take this one out and he just gets back to the 20 yard line and here's Catherine Tapp. Well Mike you were talking about those turnovers I spoke to head coach Dave Doran at halftime he said he was not happy with the team's mistakes and penalties that they made there in the first half he said we've got to play cleaner and more focused that's all there is to it and for Notre Dame Brian Kelly told me defensively Ryan Finley can make great throws we have to figure out a way to get off the field on third down Mike tap what's worse down there the cold or the wind I don't know but it's getting harder and harder to talk my lips are frozen so I, I like where you guys are a lot better yeah, it's OK up here right now all right Catherine thank you you. North Carolina State's going to be going into this win, Doug, which seems to be picked up just a little bit as we get through this third quarter. Ryan Finley, their quarterback, who has not thrown a pick since late November, continues his run, and he gives to Samuels here. That's a good first down run for North Carolina State, and they need to get him going in this second half. They really do. They need some semblance of a run game to take some pressure off the pass game. They came in with their fullback in that set, though. Now they're going a little two-back run. You just follow 48. Follow your fullback, and you will find the football. Yeah, the Cole Cook graduate student, six foot six, 250. He'll throw it this time. Use an edge block to send Myers into the secondary. Jacoby Myers picking his spots and picking up eight yards. It was one of those halftime adjustment things you look for right away. And that's what North Carolina State's offensive coordinator, Elia Drinkwitz, is featuring here to start the second half. Yeah, he needs to get a little two-back run action going. Okay, fullback's now back out of the game. No, he's still in there. There we go. So he's trying to create something with two-back offense. Usually you follow your fullback. And there goes Cook. Good call, Doug, but he can't take care of everybody. Dalen Hayes off the edge. Took that play to the boundary away. Limits the game. Sets up third down. Well, they just string this out. There's really nowhere to go. You play from inside out. Push, push, push. Nowhere to go for Samuels. And when I say follow your fullback, there's a lot of misdirection that goes on with bootlegs and different actions. But the fullback is usually the direction of where the ball is going to end up. As we see the 34-year-old Drake Woods for the first time this season, we see snow flurries in South Bend. Very light 
Not expecting much precipitation, but October 28th it is. Third and four. Irish rush five. There's time. Finley throws and it is held on to by Kelvin Harmon for the first down. So good in the air going for the ball. And the Wolfpack moves the chains with a gain of 20. This is a strong arm throw to the wide side of the field. The corner's rolled up. There's a dead zone out there, and he drills it way out to the boundary and sticks it in there between a safety and a corner. Way to go up and get the ball by Harmon. That's the level they're going to have to attack because the short passing game is being taken away. It's that middle level. First down throw. Pump, go deep down the sideline, right back for Harmon. And it's incomplete. Julian Love over here. On coverage. Well, they went for a double move again on yep. Julian Love there, which they hit earlier in the game. So they're realizing, hey, Notre Dame's taking away the short passing game. Let's get to those intermediate range, or if they're one-on-one, -on -one, let's go for the home run. How important was this drive coming out of the locker room at halftime? You saw how they're treating your stuff. You've made adjustments. Was this important mentally for a team? No doubt about it. It's your it's you're making your statement and gaining your confidence into the second half. Running back is Gillespie, and he's going nowhere. Khalid Kareem, who got a game ball for his performance against USC with a couple of sacks, is on the other side of the line of scrimmage, limits the game. Here comes third and ten. But like you say, you had a chance to go to and get these ideas. We're going to do this, this, and this, and it's executed. We think this is our best opportunity. Again, when you have a two-back run, Samuels is now basically playing a fullback position. Good job of penetration. Notre Dame's defensive line. Unheralded coming into the season has been very good. Third and 11, no flag down. NC State's offensive line didn't move, and the pass is intercepted. First time he's been picked, and Julian Love's got a convoy. Left 30, left 20, Love down. Touchdown. The O line was standing still, they were waiting. The play looked awful to begin with for NC State. And look glorious for the Irish. Finley finally throws a pick, and it's a pick six. Bradley, the uh, Bradbury, the center, feels the pressure come from the outside. He feels the jump of the defensive line. He snaps the ball before the snap count even happens. So the line is taught to freeze. The center, if someone's jumping offside, snap the ball on your own, we'll throw it away. Finley was trying to throw it away, he ends up getting intercepted, and goes the other way while the offensive line is sitting stationary. But basically, he thought Notre Dame jumped offside, so he snapped the ball. What a crushing, crushing turnover for the Wolfpack and their fans. Justin Yoon adds that extra point. The pressure was coming off the edge from Sean Crawford. He brought that blitz from the slot, and it messed everybody up. Not ready to snap it, he snapped it. The guy who never throws picks throws a pick six, and the Irish lead by 14. Notre Dame football is brought to you by State Farm, here to help life go right. By Coors Light, whatever your mountain, climb on. By Bose, get closer. And by CarMax, drive what's possible. The tie that binds these schools, the great Lou Holtz. NC State, four years in the 70s, four bowl games. Of course, a terrific 11 years here at Notre Dame with 100 wins, including the 1988 National Championship season. And, and to Coach, Hol Coach Holt's credit, NC State in the 70s, four bowls, that's when we didn't have 57 bowls a year. There weren't many bowls. I, I reached out to Coach Holtz. He was uh, able to watch and enjoy the game today at two schools that he has a great affection for from over the years. So 340 is where the odometer stops on the passes without a pick for Finley. Now in a two-score hole, Jalen Samuels tries to change it. Yoon gets blocked. Samuels is inbounds across the 50, and a terrific return desperately needed by NC State. And they'll start at the 42. Let's go back to what happened, Doug, on this interception. Well, Jerry Tillery is the nose guard, and he flinches. The center, Garrett Bradbury, thinks he's offside, so he snaps it to try to pick up a free five yards, but Tillery stays onside. The ball snapped. The offensive line is taut when it snapped early with no cadence. Freeze. Stay there. Andrew, Notre Dame player. Then Finley decides, usually he has a chance to throw a free play, throw a go route or something. There, I believe, he was just trying to throw the ball out of bounds. The ball never made it to the boundary. Interception back the other way. And for Love, it's his second pick six of the season. He had a 59-yarder against Michigan State. So Bradbury just reacting to what was going on, and it turns out to be 
just a disastrous play all the way around for NC State. They got a 58 yard kick return there by Samuels. And Nico Fertitta, who made the tackle on that play, is the Notre Dame player who's being looked at. He was over on the far side where he made that play. And Nico comes over to the sideline. It's mostly been a special teamer. Over the years, been a significant part of the special teams unit over the last couple of years here for the Irish. So I mentioned Love at that pick six against Michigan State, and this is a Notre Dame defense continuing to tell a much different story. 101 points, leading the country in terms of FBS teams in points off turnover, 12th in points allowed per game, one rushing touchdown. That's it. That's all they have allowed in seven and a half games, 30 quarters. And Mike Elko's defense coming up with a big game changer there to take a 14 point lead. Quick hand to Samuels to the short side. And Tavon Coney sends him to the sideline with a gain of one or two. And it's a third Notre Dame player I've seen go back at Samuels. So obviously he has gotten their attention, and there's a little conversation going on down there. He's a competitor. He's tough. He'll mix it up. His blocking is much improved so he's he's mixing it up on every play whether he's carrying the ball or not and Notre Dame realizes he's the one big weapon out of the backfield now especially with Hines out and he's out for the game ankle injury Naheem Hines out for the remainder of this game two yard run for his backup Reggie Gillespie and Doug just some perspective on what losing Hines for the game with an ankle injury means for this NC State offense. Well, he was a former wide receiver, so he catches the ball out of the backfield as well. Yep. He was a threat in all kinds of matchup situations, kick returns, punt returns, you name it. He's had explosive plays from everywhere on the field all year long. They don't have that home run hitter out of the backfield. Anymore. Going into the win, might be four down territory here, down two scores. At the Irish 37. See what happens on third and five first. Finley getting it hit as he throws, and it's complete. Boy, did he hang in there. What a job. First down caught at the 30 yard line by Kelvin Harmon. Kayvon Coney comes on a delayed blitz. You'll see the protection. Everybody gets set. Coney's going to come from the middle. And then here he comes late. He sees the pocket open up and comes flying in there. Finley stays in and delivers a strike. What does that tell you about a quarterback when he knows that's coming as he stands in there and throws it like that? He knew he needed a completion. He's tough as nails. He knew he needed the completion. He had to stand in there and take the shot. And he did. He's tough. He's an NFL caliber quarterback. You think so, huh? 6 He's 4 pocket, 10 Pocket passer. The Blitz Watkins off the edge. They can run a long way this side. Gillespie to the 15-yard line. So Watkins was coming down from the corner. And the Irish were down a tackler on that side. And a good run by Reggie Gillespie, the second. That's encouraging for NC State. They finally creased one to the outside. They need to offset. It just feels like the only way they're going to move the ball is throwing it. Mm -hmm. They need to be efficient when they run the football. And the two back runs have given them an opportunity. It's the longest run of the day for North Carolina State. Fake to Samuels. Finley scans the field. Gillespie hit in the open field by Love. Almost no game. You know, I say Finley's an NFL caliber guy because of his decision making. He stands tall, delivers a beautiful ball. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys can do that, but he's smart. Yeah, you know, smart. That, I know that that the interception return for a touchdown looked ugly because of all the things that happened there. But when you go over 300 passes without throwing a pick, and, that's pretty impressive. And not just football smart too. Three different degrees given all of his time in school. Three years at Boise State. Now three of eligibility at NC State. Got the extra year because of a broken ankle in his last season at Boise. And he's running the show at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Oh, and he loves that snap. Throw it away. Samuels on it. Got away. There aren't many Notre Dame defenders on this side. Terrific open field play by Nick Coleman. A sensational play by Coleman. If he doesn't get off his block and make a tackle, a uh, near disaster for NC State was going to turn into a good play. Finley's worried about the play clock, hustling up, trying to get the ball snapped, and then the little panic in the snap, and the ball shot past him. Samuel's great reaction by Samuels. If Finley took it, see, switched he just his turned eyes. That, yeah. Just a sec, turned his head. The very last second. Now, Samuels could throw the ball. He's thrown passes before. He could have thrown that thing away and saved some yardage. He was thinking about it, but did, did he have guys downfield? He wasn't sure there. Third and 17 after the loss. 
Irish have shown pressure and backed out of it most of the game. It's a screen. It's Harmon picking his way through would be tacklers. Yard short of the first down. Interesting choice coming up here. Boy, great Rack call. Six. Great execution on a third and long to just throw the wide receiver screen. No hesitation from Dave Doran. The coach sent his tight end out there. Going to go for it on fourth and one. And again, it's a field thing. We're halfway through the third quarter. You've got about five or six possessions left. Field goal touchdown two would get you tied if you went for the field goal here. But now a lot of window dressing, a lot of eye candy. Potential. In motion is Lewis. Gillespie's the back. The Irish come up with a stop. Tavon Coney. Coney in the middle of the field. He's just sliding and scraping. The defensive line occupies blocks. He slides to the gap, fills his gap full speed, and make, delivers a blow. Number four. The Irish defense, difference makers this year, slam the door on the wolf, wolf pack. Mostly cloudy day, sun setting behind the Golden Dome here in South Bend. The Irish come up with the fourth and one stop. Get the ball on offense for the first time in this second half, leading 28 to 14. Each team has a score not by their offense. North Carolina stand on a block punt. The Irish on a pick six. First down read by Wimbush. He keeps it. He saw Adams was going to get hit. No game there. All right, Doug, let's go back to this fourth down and short decision. Well, usually in short yardage, NC State looks for quarterback sneaks, but both gaps are covered because a linebacker was walking up, so they went with the play called and ran the football. It's the decision to go forward on fourth and one that we'll talk about in a second. Here is Adams running, and Josh Finch the 14th, third and a couple coming up. Okay, so that's the decision on the play call itself. The decision overall by Dave Doran, halfway through the third quarter, what may influence a coach to decide to go for it down there? I was thinking go for it as well, because what happens is you pick up 16 on third and 17, and mm -hmm. you're knocking on the doorstep. You feel good about your offense, and you want to go for it. Okay. And that momentum makes you feel the confidence in your offense, and you want to go get it. And your offense wants, wants to go after it. You've got to step back at a head coach, evaluate the situation. As a quarterback, I love going for it on that situation. Not emotional, you're thinking. Get within a field goal, touchdown, two-point conversion. Plenty of time ahead. Adams, third and short. Looks like he's down, shy of the marker. Line judge comes in for the mark. And we'll check where they put him. Arius Moore made a terrific Come play diving in. Looks like he had to get to where the ball was touching the 17 yard line. Usually when they start a new drive they'll put it right on a yard mark. So he had to get it to the 17 and there he would be short of the 17. Yeah, it didn't appear he got there and then he just got tripped up. I mean that's not you don't expect Josh Adams to go down on that. The veteran guy got in and got him. Arius Moore. Played more games on this defense than anyone else. Missed it by that much. Okay. <laughs> well, take another you can get Where's hand the credit card? Yeah. You got a credit card to slice in there? I've seen that. You've seen guys take the card out of the pocket to see if there's room to slide the card between the nose of the ball. No way you are going for that. <laughs> right. So the 20 rushes now for Adams, even though he came up a chain link short on that one. That's a career high for him. And he's over 100 yards one more time, but 111 would have kept this drive alive. The Irish open this second half with a three and out. So NC State should get good field position off of what they did on the last drive, even though they got stopped on the fourth down and no points. They still, still should end up near midfield. Even though you, you know you can look at it, as they, they lost three points there, but it depends on what they do on this drive. Tyler Newsom hasn't had his best game yet, punting. He's at 15, 50 plus yarders with the win. That would be a big positive for Notre Dame right here. Losing around, trying to get outnumbered on one side. It's the way they got the punt block earlier. It's this one away. It's tough to catch, and Lucklier makes a fair catch of a 42-yard kick. At the 41-yard line. So 
and the Wolfpack will take over, try to build their offensive momentum from the third quarter start that ended up in being stopped. We begin with a game break. Number two, Penn State. Number six, Ohio State. 28-20, Trace McSorley looking for DeAndre Tompkins. Denzel Ward seems to come away with it. The two players are wrestling. Originally called an interception, but upon review, it's overturned. It's ruled a touchdown. It's 35-20, Mike. Wow, interesting there. Meantime, in Ames, Iowa State, surprising TCU. TCU's only score kickoff return to start the third quarter. And in the world's largest uh, cocktail party, although they don't like to call it that anymore, it ain't no party for the dogs or for the uh, Gators. The dogs are cleaning them out. 35 to nothing. Tough times for Florida. Meantime, Georgia, the only loss for the Irish by one point here early in the season, continuing its role at number three in the country. Leo will keep us updated on those games here. North Carolina State takes over. Down 14, and Reggie Gillespie will run 4-2. He's a good back. He's a backup. But they are really missing Naheem Hines. We talked to Naheem this week. We are so excited to watch him play. Not just a track guy, but a track star. North Carolina State top 4 by 100 relay team in the ACC, 7th in the country. Hines ran the lead leg of that. Four by 100 for the Wolfpack last year, and uh, he has enjoyed his successful junior season on the football field. Injured his ankle early, as Catherine told us, out for the remainder of this game. Second and eight, Finley to Samuels. Stiff arm and out of bounds in front of Tavon Coney. Gain of two yards. There's Hines. We had a chance to meet him and talk with him uh, during the week. A really nice young man. We talked on the phone. We saw him at the walkthrough. He really. Uh, Polite, excited about playing here, excited about his team, his situation, the whole deal. And it's it's a shame to see him out of the game because he's excited. And when he broke in the open field, talk about form running. Oh. I mean, he just smooth as silk, and you didn't catch it. I mean, if he got a half step anywhere, he was gone. You were asking him how he's such a good runner. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I can't go over 30, 40 yards without looking to pitch the ball to somebody. <laughs> Third and five. Finley's throw is incomplete, and that's a little bit of a story today. Sean Crawford and the Irish DBs, those contested balls, those short passes, they have broken up about a half dozen of them here today. Well, he's right in the slot, but he's sitting at the stick. See the first down marker? Crawford knows they run their routes around the first down marker. He's going to settle his feet, break hard on the ball, and then you got to make the play on the ball. You talk about good coaching. It's been a good game plan from Mike Elko. Just one touchdown for this Wolfpack offense. They're three and out. A.J. Cole kicks it. Chris Fink runs up for the fair catch. He slides into it at the 21-yard line. Six and one against six and one. Right now it's the Irish by 14. Back in South Bend, Irish by 14. Wimbush first down pass. I believe it was deflected. Incomplete. James Smith Williams, one of the rotation of uh, second team, but still good defensive lineman in there is Bradley Chubb, the star of this North Carolina State defense, gets a break. It's part of their plan. They want him fresh for the fourth quarter. That's why they try to rotate him. Josh Adams, big opening Adams. Will he hit another home run? Adams on the run again. Another huge touchdown in this special season for Adams. Seven yards and arrested Bradley Chubb's team will be down 21 the next time he plays. Sam Mustafer at center seals his man. Well, Alex Bars to the right, and it's north and south. Look at that gap. Josh Adams says, where's that been all day? I've been waiting for one of those. He's been tough sledding all day, physical running. He finally gets a crease where he can turn it loose. A seventh run this year of over 60 yards. Yoon adds the extra point, 35-14. There was no contact on that one. Yards after contact helped set the table and loosen up the NC State run well, this, defense. This is what the day's been. It's been yards after contact. There's a nice hole, but an arm, an arm here, an arm there, pushing most of this 
is tough physical running. He's strong. One arm is not going to pull him down in a hole. He's going to fall forward, continue to make yards, and he had his 100-yard rushing day. You know, it, it was tough sledding early. As the game has gone, Notre Dame's wearing down the defensive line. There were some injuries. And then finally, he gets a clean gap, and it's off to the races. And that's just persistence in the offensive line. And when you start putting Josh Adams in the national conversation with the top runners, Bryce Love didn't play for Stanford in their game against Oregon State on Thursday. Jonathan Taylor, Wisconsin. Josh Adams there at the top of the list, and he's added to that today with some impressive runs against another good rushing defense and one more long touchdown run. 187 yards rushing, and they have not let up a 100-yard rusher this year coming into today. That is out of bounds, which means the ball will go to the 35-yard line. Third time Yoon's kickoff has gone out of bounds this season. Big things being talked about now for Josh Adams this 2017 season. Kickoff, out of bounds, kicking team. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Catherine? Well, to make sure their Heisman Trophy-worthy teammate was on the radar of the voters of the prestigious award, the Fighting Irish created hashtag 33 Trucking, a modest trucking company that specializes in long-haul smash-mouth deliveries led by its lead trailer, Josh Adams. Six members of the Fighting Irish donned the trucker hats as part of the promotion for college football's most hallowed trophy, Mike. Yeah, and there are the hats that uh, they're handing out now that is part of the campaign. Finley's pass incomplete. Another pass breakup that time, Nick Coleman. So the Irish ordered those to start the uh, campaign. There have been so many different things sent out for Heisman campaigns over the years. I remember, Doug, when we were doing studio shows, and we get a, a whole bunch of stuff mailed to us, right? But this one was a little different. They wanted to try to do something that has the long runs, the trucking thing there. Guy from Pennsylvania, number 33. So the whole interstate theme, but also to incorporate the entirety of the team. If you add up 11 on offense, 11 on defense, and 11 on special teams, a little liberty with the numbers, that's 33. There's Gillespie cutting it back for a couple of yards. You know, on the Notre Dame stage, special years get you special consideration. Saquon Barkley had a touchdown to start the game. He's been held in check, though, in terms of yards from scrimmage by Ohio State. Love didn't play. Mayfield in Oklahoma. And now Josh Adams updated to 1,154 yards in eight games. And Doug, remember, he's gone nine quarters where he hasn't even played in this season. So he certainly has brought himself into the conversation. From the back, the official stops the game here for a moment. See if the timeout was taken. Timeout, Notre Dame, first time out of the second half. Please put 335 on the clock. Thank you. One of my favorite people, one of the people who introduced me to college football, and we lost him this year, is Dick McPherson, a longtime coach in Syracuse. When he taught me 33 years ago, first time I covered college football was sometimes they forget September, sometimes they forget October. They never forget November. If you're going to be in the Heisman race, you've got to do it the first two months. Has Josh Adams put himself in consideration for a trophy you know so well? I believe he has. I mean, Barkley has some unbelievable highlight stuff and the yards. And, all, and here comes Adams just slowly catching him methodically. It's, he's getting stronger as the year goes. And he split a lot of carries early in the year. Sure. He sat for nine quarters in some blowouts. He could have gotten a lot more yards in situations. So, I mean, it's not like they were padding stats at any moment. I mean, he's just doing his share. Today has been the first time that he has been really leaned on to carry the full load, and he's responded. So today might go more to impress you from a Heisman perspective with 187 against the sixth-ranked rush defense. Against this defense, no doubt about it. After the Notre Dame time of third and six, NC State will run the ball here. Working hard was Gillespie, but the early penetration by Andrew Trumbetti, the senior from New Jersey, will force fourth down, and NC State will punt the ball away. So the last five Heisman-winning running backs start to look at their yards per carry. Ricky Williams and Ron Dane, Reggie Bush, and we know that his award was vacated, but he still won the Heisman with these numbers. Mark Ingram, Derrick Henry, look at their average per carry, and note where Adams was, 9.2 coming in. He hasn't heard it too much today, averaging nine per carry. Think back for the fair catch, and he gets it at the 10-yard line. But Doug, 
how do you get there with these yards? Linemen and two special ones lead the way. Couple studs on the left side, McClinchy and Nelson, and they move people. They get movement on their blocks all the time, which creates this big gap on the left side to cut back and go vertical, especially when they get double teams. And here, Nelson double teams with Mustafa, McClinchy walling his man off. They take a lot of pride in getting movement in the run game to create those scenes and in the pass game solid as a rock. And here McClinchy actually gets the pull, which I'm sure he's excited about. This will be his highlight of the week. <laughs> Having fun today with Chip Long, their offensive coordinator, to the tune of 35 to 14. And that's Harry Heastan, the offensive line coach for this Notre Dame team, who is just loved by his players and uh, he's part of this collective group and we talk about the Adams Heisman campaign trying to be recognition of the team efforts and I think they're all aware of that Dion McIntosh gets this carry from off the wing there 45th on the season and we talked about you know Heisman campaigns you got a guy like McGlinchey who's an All-American and right next to him Quentin Nelson that was the one thing that Josh Adams was hoping for that a Heisman campaign would fit his personality not about him but about the accomplishments of the team along with him as Adams gets a first down across the 20 and to the 21 yard line Catherine. Well, Mike, I spoke to Josh Adams high school coach Tom Hedrick this week. He said he's the same kid today as he was his freshman year in high school. He also said every one of the 1800 students at Central Bucks High School, they knew Josh, not because he was a star football player, because he was an exceptional person. He told a great story about a girl in high school. She didn't have a date to the prom and Josh offered to take her. He didn't want her to go alone. It's stories like that, Mike, that we've been hearing all week long about Josh Adams. Yeah, it's one of those you, you get on the radar and people start asking the questions and the more they find out, the more they appreciate what the young man's accomplished tough to do that against his team McIntosh trying to run wide and he was reeled in quickly by Kentavious Street a freak athlete flag is down there Street's got that 40 inch vertical and squats 700 pounds in a video that went viral uh, when he, I, <laughs> I thought foul. the bar was legal hands to the face number 98 defense oh. 15 yard penalty automatic first down that's on BJ Hill so it erases this play I, I, a, I thought the bar. I'm looking at this like you got to be kidding me. My favorite is the audio in the back. Somebody yells out, "He doesn't need a spotter. He can do it. He doesn't need a spot." Yeah, that's easy for you to say standing in the back. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I, you know what? I can look at that bar and get hurt. <laughs> that is crazy. Good player too. He was the number two recruit in North Carolina coming out. And that's part of what this North Carolina State team has built. This defensive line that Notre Dame's run for over 200 yards on here today, 233. They have pushed each other stronger in the weight room, a little bit of toughness, but they're having a very tough time with the Irish running attack today as Mike Stevens, the corner, comes up to tackle Dion McIntosh. Don't lose track of the fact that they have Clemson next week. Yes, they do. And if they beat Clemson, they're basically home for they got to win one out of three uh, conference games from there on out. Don't you dare say they're home free because, you know, well, they Boston play College Clemson. Clemson. <laughs> hey, Boston College is on the schedule. We're pumping our chest out a little bit. Uh, the juggernaut BC. Great game last night. Great win over Florida State for Boston College. Unbelievable performance on Red Bandana night. 35 three at Chestnut Hill. McIntosh the run for the first down to the 49 yard line. This game isn't over. It's a 21 point deficit for Dave Doran's team. But as you said, they've got conference games left. The defending national champions come calling. They go to Chestnut Hill. Wake comes in here next week. Wake Forest with an impressive win over Louisville. You know, this has been weird this season in this half of the ACC, the Atlantic. I mean, this is the half with the national champs in Clemson. The Heisman Trophy winner Lamar Jackson in Louisville and Florida State that you know, goes to a bowl game every year since you won the Heisman pretty much Adams with the carry there but it's been turned upside down NC State's been terrific this year Wake Forest had that win today and our alma maters Boston College and Syracuse have uh, from the mountaintop with a win over Florida State a win over Clemson made this a very competitive side of the ACC. That's all down the road, but right now there's a 21-point hole to dig out of for NC State, and it has been a Notre Dame story. Adams has rushed for over 200 yards. The Irish lead by 21 after three.
And we'll be back at Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC. Off we go to the fourth quarter here at Notre Dame Stadium. Mike Tirico, Doug Flutie, Catherine Tappan. The Irish score all 14 in that second, in the third quarter, I should say, to take this second half advantage out to 35 to 14. It was 14 7 NC State. And since then, the Irish have scored 28 in a row. Josh Adams, who was over the 200 yard mark when this quarter began, loses a few there as Bradley Chubb adds another tackle for loss. Well, he hasn't stopped playing here. Working on McGlinchey, throws his forearm out. Actually, it was a crack block coming down from Dern Smythe. He just didn't get there. Chubb's not going to stop playing. He's he can, he's the type of guy that could strip sack and pick up the ball and go the other way and turn this game in a heartbeat. It's uh, one of the things that Notre Dame does on offense. We've watched them uh, throughout the year play this no huddle offense, and they back the tempo off as these teams do. You don't have to huddle. But can still milk the clock down to the very end. It's third and eight. And Wimbush will throw here on third and eight. And a rip it complete. Kevin Stefferson first down as he's thrown down at the 36 yard line. It's been a good passing day for Wimbush. 13 on that one. He's made some touch throws, some accurate throws. And here from the pocket, he's looking left, works his way all the way back across the field to the right. Probably his third option. Things we haven't seen from him earlier in the year. Shot play from the 36 downfield for Boykin. Incomplete. Trying to get Miles Boykin. There was a little contact. So the fans wanted to flag, and so did Wimbush. <laughs> Wimbush is saying, look up at the replay screen. This We're going to go a play before. This is the last play. He's looking left. Watch his eyes. Work his way all the way back from the far left to the far right. Earlier in the year, it was one and done. So when Wimbush was telling the referee, Mr. Official, will you look at this, look, please? He's got it right. Hey, 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 even Boykin's throwing the arm up, waving. I'm sure Dave Doran, the North Carolina State coach, is unhappy that his team's been called for 11 penalties. But they should have had 12. That's an all-time egregious miss. Adams to the 32-yard line. Jermaine Pratt with a stop. Pratt's had a nice day, one of the few bright spots for the Wolfpack. Adams heading out. Chip Long's got other options to send in. Send in Dexter Williams. What kind of job do you think he's done this year? First year after coming over from Memphis. Just an amazing job of flipping the switch from a spread offense, throwing the ball around to extra tight ends, two back runs, mixing in the run, using a mobile quarterback. He, he's done a phenomenal job of creating a mindset of a, a physical running attack. Movement here, going to drop the Irish back five. False start, number 72, offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. It's been a tough game. Robert Haynes, he's been called a couple of times. Tommy Kramer won. Get all this strength across the offensive line, and you've got Hainsey and Kramer, a freshman and sophomore, sharing that right tackle position. And each said when that penalty happens, they're glad they're the one on the sideline, <laughs> and like, okay, that was him. Okay, well, don't do that wrong. They, the entire time they're on the sideline, they're eyeing each other, Getting the look of the read. They know the play call. They, they're seeing their responsibilities and constant learning on the fly. So Kramer is dialed in on 72 because he's going to play right tackle probably the next series. And then when they come off the field, they talk to each other about what they saw last play. Here's what you did. Pressure coming. Wimbush saw it. Got away from one. Can he get away from two? He throws it right-handed towards the line of scrimmage as he was pulled down. And is uh, slow to get up after he was pulled down from behind. Browning, the quarterback was outside the tackle box, and the ball went beyond the line of scrimmage. Jared Fernandez was the one who grabbed Wimbush last, and he's very, very slow to his feet here. Timeout, injured Notre Dame player. Yeah, grab him by the back here, and then fall on his leg as he just kind of pitched almost like an option pitch forward. I mean, it's everything he had to get an all-out effort to try to pitch that ball to get it back to the line of scrimmage. So he was fully straining out and leaving himself vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And uh, slowly walking off the field. Remember, he missed one game with a right foot sprain. Ian Book started that game in Chapel Hill, and they beat North Carolina. And it was a, a legal play by Jared Fernandez. It was not a horse collar. He didn't grab inside the top of the collar or even at the nameplate he grabbed from behind right at the number and then he got his arm off and wrapped him up 
So it was just a legal play, but a tough ending for the Notre Dame quarterback. You know, that does not look like he's returning anytime soon. Book the sophomore from El Dorado Hills, California. It's fourth down, so he'll have a chance to get warm in case Wimbush cannot come back in. 12.39 left, and Tyler Newsom will punt for the Irish. Big rush from North Carolina State. Newsom gets rid of it. And everything going ND's way down at the eight yard line. They check on Winbush two and a half into the fourth. His team up 21. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Volkswagen. Why settle for an SUV when you can have an SUVW? Buy Coca Cola Zero Sugar. Real Coca Cola taste, zero sugar, zero calories. Buy Reese's, Reese's. Perfect. And buy. AT&T. The quarter tradition. We tell overture as uh, the students get involved. I'm sure, a lot of Notre Dame students over the years who are watching, the alums, remember being a part of that break last week. Everybody back on campus here this week, and they have a top ten football team that's walking around campus and uh, raising the spirits here in South Bend. Reggie Gillespie remains the back from their own eight. Here he comes to the left. Three yards to the junior from High Point, North Carolina. The football down in the, in the triangle, the Raleigh-Durham area, very good. Charlotte County, uh, Charlotte-Mecklenburg County, I meant to say, a lot of good football as well. So North Carolina State has a chance to build with a lot of in-state talent here as they continue to go forward. One of the reasons they have so many players who are fourth, fifth year in the program, and have really built something good. Very disappointing day for them to this point. The last day, you couldn't get it. Julian Love again. Man, has he been everywhere today? He's just breaking on the ball here. It's his own coverage where he's breaking up on the, the swing route by the back, but primarily it's been man to man coverage that he has been shutting people down. He did get burned on one double move down mm -hmm. the field. But the entire Notre Dame secondary has been breaking on those intermediate routes to short routes and knocking balls and more more deflections and knockdowns than I've seen in a long time. That 142 yard pass play but Finley's under 50 percent. He's sixth in the country completing it at 69 percent during the season but today 16 of 34. That's a lot of credit to the Notre Dame corners. See them adjust the coverage late in the secondary as Finley rips it right not even close and now he's 16 to 35. They have done a great job. Notre Dame defense has done a great job at taking the easy throws away, forcing Finley to look up the field for the intermediate to deeper routes, and it's just not happening down there. And that's why the percentage, you, you, you're not seeing the wide receiver screens and the hitch routes and the easy out route. Everything is a difficult completion. It was aggressive, and it's worked. A.J. Cole kicks it, kicks it with the wind. Think back to get it inside his own 40 made a man miss and across midfield to the Wolfpack side at the 48 yard line solid return there no points last eight possessions for NC State Irish defense has done the job up 21 here in the fourth. Well, Tuesday's Halloween. Wednesday, you'll see the ghost. King Gostaspair and the Flyers taking on the Hawks. The United States. We were at the Notre Dame hockey game, by the way. That'll be rivalry night, 8 Eastern on NBC. We're at the Notre Dame-Nebraska-Omaha hockey game on Thursday night. Uh, just some highlights for you real quick. Yes, I scored yes. 250 bucks for uh, air travel for someone. Flutie, the greatest athlete we've ever known. Three tries. <laughs> <laughs> Meantime, the hockey department, Catherine Tappen with Liam McHugh, our NHL host. Yes! <laughs> All right. <laughs> tap the stick for tap, right? So, um, unbelievable. First shot, too. Ta Tappen, no, it, it, we're carrying Flutie on the line here. The two of us are the scorers. I know. I, I, I swear just... Doug was at the rink at 6 a.m. the following morning <laughs> practicing his shot. He was so rattled he missed it. Wimbush is back in for Notre Dame. First down. Taking a home run shot. Stetherson couldn't get there. Almost a home run ball and just a step away from a touchdown. 
boy, he turns this loose. And Stefferson can run. This is – he came back two weeks ago. He's been a big part of the offense the last two weeks, blowing the top off coverages just out of reach. But he has opened things up for other receivers in this offense because of his speed. Natural playmaking ability went up and they had a nice touchdown catch on the fade route in the corner, just tapping the toe. Been a big impact. Incompletion keeps the clock stopped. 11 and a half to go here in the fourth. Josh Adams comes back to the left and he'll gain just about a yard beside Nick uh, Bradley Chubb over there, the cousin of Georgia running back Nick Chubb, who we saw earlier this year. What about Bradley's work? He's dynamic. He really is. When you run right at him, you're better off. Get in his face, get the push. Extra tight ends in the formation. Early on, he blew up the backfield. The penetration is what he's all about. Getting into the backfield, disturbing on pass rush, his speed. Double team from two All-Americans. That shows you the concern. Notre Dame has been sliding the protection his way all day long. But Doug, that's what you do when there's a great player. You do those types of things, try to run at them, wear them down, slide protection. They get extra attention, and it's paid off. They'll run that way again. A terrific run by Jared Fernandez, the leading tackler, the linebacker. All that attention on Chubb. Eight tackles, three for loss to add to his total. He's now up to 17 there. Seven and a half sacks. He's in the top ten in the country. Elite performer. I mean, he picked up an early sack, had a couple penetrations, tackles for loss. But as time went by and Notre Dame found ways to run the football, and most of the time when you put him in space, he's been lights out. When they ran right at him or put a tight end in his face and ran the ball behind it, they had a, Notre Dame had better, uh, more positive plays. Eight on the rush. The Irish pick them all up. Newsom's kick will go all the way back. So it will be 47 kick, 27 on the net. Three and out for the Irish, but they still lead by three touchdowns. Lee McKee with a game break. Eight unbeatens to start the day. The one in serious trouble right now. Number four, TCU on the Iowa State three-yard line. Looking to tie the game at 14. Kenny Hill sacked, fumbles. Iowa State recovers. Remains 14-7, but now with under 90 seconds left, TCU has the ball down a touchdown, Mike. Wow, what a job Matt Campbell has done in Ames. He was at Toledo from 2011 to 2015. He's built a real good team at Iowa State, trying to muddle up the Big 12 even more. Chance to get the win. The only TCU score was on a kickoff return to start the second half. Here, 35-14, Notre Dame, and that pass incomplete. And the Notre Dame defensive backs have had their hands on so many passes today, Doug. And basically, they're trying to take away the short passing game. So they're sitting flat-footed and breaking on the ball. And in third down situations, sitting at the first down marker and breaking the ball. I don't know that I've seen this many passes, rhythm-type passes, knocked down in one game. I agree. It's just amazing how many balls they're breaking on and getting their hand on the ball. 16 of 36. Finley. Passing on the afternoon. Golaski, Julian Aquara brings him down. No game. And by the way, updating that game with number four TCU. They just threw a pick. So Iowa State, I believe TCU is done with timeouts. Iowa State's going to win that game. And that'll knock one of the unbeatens out at number four TCU. And that means Notre Dame will have a chance to move up in the rankings one more notch. Georgia just, just cleans out Florida. Man, it has been a tough season for Florida. The dogs keep winning. That makes the Notre Dame victory, or loss, I should say, look even better for the Irish. Blitz off the corner. They throw behind it. The last beat. They got nothing out of three plays there. Dalen Hayes over there for the Irish. Along with Jerry Tillery. You got to give Mike Elko credit again. Yes. I mean, there they bring a strong side blitz with Crawford. He comes off the strong side. They play zone behind it, break on the throw. And North Carolina State's punting again. Last nine possessions for Mike Elko's defense. There you see. Five three and outs in addition to no points. It's an NC State team that came in averaging 35 points per game. Punch it away by Cole one more time. Fink to the 23. Terrific open field tackle by Mike Stevens. It's been a good day for Brandon Wimbush. You know, early in the year, we were concerned with his accuracy down the field. 
And today, here's a touch throw where he looked the corner off to make sure the window was open and put it in there with touch. He threw some on the move along the sideline. This one had a window of about three inches. A little sidearm one. I mean, he, he's putting the ball where he wants to put it, changing the arm angle and the yeah. delivery. Wide side fade into the corner, which is a ball near a long time. He's really, he's limping around a little bit now on that ankle. Uh, so the, the run game for him right now is probably a little limited, but he is throwing the ball extremely well today. See the tape, they spatted that left ankle. That was not that way before the game. They took him into the tent on the sideline to look at him after the injury. We run here for Dexter Williams. You saw that change platform throw throw inside. We'll see those tomorrow night with Matthew Stafford of the Lions in the Sunday night game against Pittsburgh. Uh, those are the types of things that, you know, especially a quarterback with his mobility who gets on the edge is going to have to do because defensive ends know hey let's stay home and try to block these guys uh, passes out here and a lot of times when you're throwing the ball in the middle of the field or, or like the tight end area the six to eight yard passes you got to get around the defensive end or a tackle to find that lane and you drop the arm down and throw around people especially on the run they're throwing here on second and six taking a shot downfield towards Boykin incomplete interesting with eight minutes left I'll stop the clock and Jonathan Alston was there in coverage so the headline on the marquee coming into this afternoon now evening was number six running team Notre Dame number six run defense who would hold up then there's your answer yeah, as the game has gone Notre Dame has just been able to chunk it more and more and more in the run game early on very stout up front a couple of injuries but they came back in there one came back in the game third and six they pressure and they throw again it's complete for the first down to chase Claypool at the 34 yard line showing tremendous trust oh. and confidence in Wimbush an 11 yard gain there. Well the, the, the post route in the last drive going after it right away is, yeah. is Chip Long. That's Chip Long. He was near midfield. He went after him. He's in his own end. He doesn't care what the score is. We're going to run the offense and throw the football. Notre Dame has won its last five games all by 20 or more leading by 21 here and a run for maybe two yards for Dexter Williams. So we talk about the growth and evolution of players and because they're at Notre Dame because they're a starter on a ranked team you expect them to be finished products and sometimes we sometimes we forget they're 19 20 21 they've only played a half dozen games and Brian Kelly was terrific with us talking about this. Sometimes you got to stop looking at every single number and the pass completion percentage is 52 which is really poor in this day and age of college football with bubble screens and all the other stuff. But when you watch Wimbush's body of work over the last two three games you see a guy who's starting to improve at the position. He is making more and more pocket throws. We saw today on a couple of replays how his eyes would go from one edge of the field all the way across the field right. to the other. I mean, the, the, those were things he wasn't doing early in the year. He was very inaccurate with the ball. Even mm -hmm. on little under routes, guys right in front of him, he right. was missing because he's unsure of what he's seeing. But you he's said he hasn't more played confident. two years before this year. He, he was excited to get hit week one. I remember that. Because yeah. he hadn't gotten the hit. So you got to keep it in perspective. And it's all one stage at a time. And when you talk about what Chip Long was talking about and Brian Kelly, that, hey, the numbers don't matter. And we're, we're, we're going to take those numbers, push them to the side. He's amazing on third down. He's amazing in the red zone, and we're winning football games. First down run for Williams brings Dion McIntosh onto the field as he gets to the outside. He's chased down by Jonathan Alston. With 5.52 to go. You know, all this is being said. You know, the score right now, 35-14, two plays change this game. Mm -hmm. A premature snap. Finley throws an interception return for a touchdown right. in a fourth and one play. Two plays swung this game 21 points. Dave Doran's team was coming out of the locker room at a seven point hole. He knew that they had to stop the mistakes. Too many first half penalties, 11 of those, and they didn't have the room or space to have an error turn the other way the way it did with that pick six. If you're checking my math on the two plays, 21 points, it was the two touchdowns and then the momentum for the third. That's not true. Okay. <laughs> if you're checking my math. <laughs> McIntosh is the carry. Hey, much 
Much like the Notre Dame offensive staff, you just take some stats and put them to the side. Put them to the side. <laughs> McIntosh gets his turn, and this one's nice and clean for him. Nice job by Durham Smythe. Actually, he doesn't even have to hit anybody and kick out the end. The youngster putting it up in there, adding to the rushing yards. One of the things we highlighted at the start of the game was Sam Mustafer, the center, 53. He was going to have a battle with B.J. Hill and the good defensive interior players from North Carolina State. And he's done a very good job in that regard today. McIntosh again. Another first down for the Irish with 4.44 to go. You know, Sam Mustafer last year in this game, in the rain, had a rough day. Right. This was a big redemption for him today to come back and have a strong. He's been great all year long, getting stronger and stronger, confident in that offensive line. And he's become one of the leaders. Yeah, I mean, he's right on par with everyone else. He, he got stronger this offseason. So this was a big day for him. First down from the 28. Be under four minutes here in a few seconds. Another nine yard run for McIntosh. And you start looking at this number, Doug. It, it continues to impress in rush yards. Over 300 now for the Irish on the day. 53 is Sam Mustafer. The center turn his man to the outside, create a wall. Just let his man take himself out of the hole. Mm -hmm. But he had a lot of double teams early in the game that he and both guards, Bars and Nelson, would get onto the double team, get good movement and up to the linebacker level. He's been a big part of it. Timeout, Notre Dame. You That's saw that big number. Timeout. 304 rushing yards on this Saturday for the Irish. This isn't going to be the cap to this season. This isn't going to be the pinnacle to this season. There's too much in front of us. Those were the words of Brian Kelly in the Irish locker room right after the USC game. And there's a lot of talk. Notre Dame back in the top 10, winning five in a row by 20 or more. First time since 1966. There were nine straight wins by 20 or more before the famous 10 10 tie with Michigan State. And this team has kept its focus. McIntosh will lose a yard here. The mental aspect, Brian Kelly talked about all the strength and conditioning they've done, the way they've gone about it, which has been different, the physical, the execution. He said the focus needs right now to be mental on our side. We need these guys to be in the right frame of mind. And he felt that they were this week and have taken care of business, and they've taken that from practice to the field. There's no doubt about it. And that all started in the offseason program and all that. I think the team is mentally tougher. You know, they, they expect to win now. Beating USC was a big win for him. There's no doubt about it. Evidenced by a Gatorade bath at the end of the game. Correct. But they snapped right back into it this week and went back to work. Matt Bayless, strength and conditioning, was given a lot of credit for that turnaround mentally. He worked their tail off in the offseason. All the guys bought in when they started seeing the numbers change and they get stronger and quicker. And it's all si some kind of science. I don't understand. <laughs> but all measurables. And they're continuing to get stronger during the season during his program. It's very interesting. Dave Balloon, Jake Flint are also part of the strength and conditioning group for Notre Dame. They've used science, a mix of a lot of things. And for those of you who played football, and Doug, when you heard this, you were really intrigued by it. all the numbers, the metrics. Notre Dame, Brian Kelly feels his team as individuals are getting stronger as the season has gone on, which is very rare. And their adjustments seem to be working quite well on the field as well. No doubt about it, because usually you're hanging on to just get healthy for the next week. Right. You know, who's banged up, who isn't. Let's get healthy, take a day of rest. They come back, they lift hard, They're not necessarily with heavy, heavy weight, more with bands and things, but uh, are able to continue to work really hard and push themselves. A lot of running McIntosh trying to stay in bounds. He's getting his opportunity, and he is showing that there is depth in that running back room, half a yard shy of the first down. Next week, it is Wake Forest, who had a big win over Louisville today. A record-setting win, as a matter of fact, for their quarterback, John Wolford, and their receiver, Greg Dortch, who caught four touchdowns. So we're right back here next Saturday. The Irish figure to move up in the rankings with a loss or two ahead of the 3.30 Eastern time right here on NBC. Adams over 200 yards, his day done, his Heisman campaign, 33 trucking is on the move.
Williams inside the five to the three yard line. We mentioned Wake. Impressive for Dave Quasson, the head coach there, as they have uh, really gotten their season turned around after three straight losses with the big win today. And there are the numbers for Wolford against Louisville's now shaky pass defense. So that's the next one. And when you keep winning, they keep getting big. And uh, Brian Kelly's team all over that. There's the final score of the Louisville game today. And Notre Dame has uh, run this clock out with this drive here at the back end for about six minutes. The pack go back to Raleigh. And they take on Clemson next Saturday. But another big test has been passed with flying colors by the Irish. 35 14, yet another win by more than 20. And as the calendar page turns to November, Notre Dame is once again in the championship picture. Terrific game for Winbush. Adams over 200 yards. And here's Catherine with Brian Kelly. Coach, six straight wins now for your team, back to back against ranked opponents. What do you attribute most to the team's success right now? Uh, we got a great mindset. Our guys come ready to play, and you know they're they're dominating their opponent. They ran the ball, I don't know, 15 straight times against. That's a great football team. North Carolina State is a very very good football team, and. Um, they control the, the flow of the game other than the mistake we made early on, on on punt protection. You know, we pretty much dominated the football game. A tremendous effort once again from Josh Adams over 200 yards rushing. Is there anything new that you learn from him on the football field in games like this? No, I mean, you know, he's got a great um, demeanor every day he comes to work. He's one of the hardest working guys that we have on our team. And it's no surprise. Great players are your hardest workers. And he's got a great supporting staff. That that offensive line is an outstanding group as well. So, um, you know, another under the radar day for uh, Josh. We'll just keep uh, playing and hopefully they, they won't vote for uh, the Heisman until the end of the year. Coach, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Over 200 yards, uh, one more time, second time this year, and now you start thinking, November, it's Wake Forest here, it's at Miami, the Canes have been in close games and they keep winning them, Navy back here to close, close the home season, and to the farm to take on Stanford to close it out, that is what stands between the Irish and as good a one-loss resume as anyone would have in the country, given what they have done throughout this year and the strength of that one loss by one point to Georgia. The alma mater sung again after a Notre Dame victory in South Bend. In this team now, Josh Adams, 27 carries, 202 yards, and here he is with Catherine. Josh, over 200 yards rushing against one of the top run defenses in the country. How did you do it today? Um, it was a team effort. I mean, of course, the offensive line has been playing amazing. You know, they kind of brought the energy for this game, and they uh, kind of told the team what they wanted to do and what they wanted to accomplish, and we did it together. So that's that's how we did it. Your team launched a campaign that involves this hat here, the 33 trucking. I know you hate talking about it, but what does it mean when you have the whole team coming together for your success? Uh, I mean, it's really about all of us. We wouldn't be here without each other. And it's about every guy doing their job and doing it to the best of their ability. And when that happens, you know, you get those individuals who are recognized. So uh, it's just about the team coming together and, and fighting for something greater than themselves and trying to accomplish that goal that we have set for ourselves. And when that happens, you know, the rest will take care of itself. Josh, congratulations. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mike. All right, chap. Thank you.
on to November and the Irish in the championship conversation. Brian Kelly's full press conference available for you on NBCSports.com. We're all back here one week from right now. Wake Forest here in South Bend, 3.30 Eastern on NBC. Tonight, 8, 7 Central, Dateline, Saturday Night Mystery. Later tonight, 11.30 Eastern and Pacific, David S. Pumpkin's animated Halloween special followed by SNL Presents Halloween. Rob Hyland, our producer, Pierre Busa, our director, our terrific Notre Dame on NBC team. With my fellow goal scorer, Catherine Tappan, and Doug Flutie, Mike Tirico. So long.